Unloaded, reloaded, I got the flows and they holding all my brains in them days in them. They don't wanna see a young nigga amazing. I'm breaking they jaws to the flow, you know I'm blazing. My flow feel like it's caging. I burn up their whole brain, then I dance on that shit. Hey, what it do? What's your name? Where we from? What's the game? We gon' kill the shit. Burn it down, break their name, turn around. <gasps> they ain't playing with your boy. I told them this ain't really joy. I ain't hating on a nigga, but I'm vibing on the <laughs> line. My sun coming soon, so I'm shining like the moon You don't know what these dark times can do to you So don't let your mind hit the fool You like a poodle dude Breaking up, I'm <laughs> doodling you <laughs> Drawing you like a sketch I'm out of the game, I'm back again Floating on the beat, my friends About to talk about the shit again Damn Man Fuck. <laughs> yo, 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 welcome to Vine Tree Radio. It's your boy Wes. You here chilling with the Vine Tree. Here go my boy. Mowdy Wowie, how's it going? Yo. And we here with a guest. Yes, Introduce sir, yourself. Uh, my name is Rattler. Hey. Uh, music engineer, producer, all that, you know what I'm saying? Right on, right yeah. on. Good to be on the Vine Tree, you know what I'm saying? Nice to be here. Thank you for coming, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, man, for real. It's yeah. lit. Yeah, bro, it's uh, been a long journey starting this up. This is about our fifth episode, I want to say. We've had a okay. few guests so far, so I feel like we're a little bit more well-oiled in this thing. But somewhat, I kind of want to still work out some kinks and try new shit because okay. we've had different guests all this time that have had different interests and things. And I've met them all from a variety of places, I feel like. And you is somebody I met later on in my life, like more so having to do with this shit. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's interesting to have those kind of conversations too because a lot of the stuff that I have been talking about has been maybe like a lead up to now like it's been like oh how did this happen from now like my start like interviewing those people from when I started making music to like that point so it's like this in some way is a very interesting conversation yeah. because we get to talk a lot about the current state of music and a lot of our current approaches to music so I mean we kind of dive into how like I met you and how I found out about you making music you know because I know when I met you I just knew, like, I bought with you, and I didn't even know you made music or nothing. Yeah. I just seen you talking about some real shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's actually crazy, bro, because I actually didn't really remember us, like, hooping like that and CJ brought it up, but, like, we were hooping, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? But I really kind of just um, relinked with you on uh, on Instagram, bro. You know, it's crazy. Um, yeah, that's when I, you started talking about music, huh? Yeah, I was talking about music, because I didn't really do music at the time we were hooping, you know? Mm. I was still doing other things. I was going to college. Uh, I was trying to get a degree in kinesiology. You know what I'm saying? I was working, like, two jobs, like... So I was already on, like, different stuff during that time, but it wasn't until I actually lost uh, my job when I started making beats. You feel oh, me? Shit. And I started posting stuff. So then that's when I'm, I was posting things on the internet, on Instagram, bro. Um, I see your stuff. You see mine. I don't know how I really linked for real, but we started talking, bro. And I think I just seen your stuff after that because I knew that... I was, like, I, I think I sent you around school, but I didn't know you. But yeah. then I sent you, like, in... Like when we hooped And then I saw you on Instagram I was like oh that's the dude I was hooping with Like he makes music and shit Yeah And in my mind I kind of thought it was ill Because the shit you was talking about Like on the courts and shit With people I was like oh Like whatever your music sound like Is gonna be like some ill shit to me Because it seemed like you resonated with You seemed like not a conformist That's what I would say Like you yeah. wasn't really out there Just Most like rocking definitely. with everything That anybody was saying And I was like alright Maybe I wonder how this dude Approaches music you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, but I had no idea that you were starting music at that time. I thought it was more so like a bit like you plant. Like I thought like you had some shit and then you were like, okay, I'm going to start releasing it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. See, it was real organic, bro. Like, she's kind of telling me, bro, like, um, I'm not really a conformist, bro. Most definitely not a conformist. You know what I'm saying? So when I had lost my job, bro, um, I started thinking about like other things that I could do because I could just go and get another job. You feel me? But in my head, I was like, I'll only find something that's going to like, you know, help me out even if I do have a job that will make me money like elsewhere. You know, mm-hmm. I had a laptop, bro, and I wasn't going to college anymore, so I was like, let me figure out what I could do with the laptop. I just went on YouTube and looked up what I could do for free and found beats, bro. And I started making beats because I'm like, I want to work for myself. So that's really how I got into it. It was real organic, you feel me? But it worked out great, man. Like, this has been like a good transition for me, you know what I'm saying? And just even linking with you, bro, like, I get to be able to be put in the opportunities that I didn't really think were like a thing a year ago, you know what I'm saying? Damn. So this stuff like has definitely progressed real organic, real smooth. And that's that's what it's about for me, bro. Like I, I really dig the fact of like kinda noticing that in people, I think that's what producing is about, like almost like seeing what when people have those intrinsic values about themselves and mm-hmm. kinda like making them shine. And like I saw that like 
in you somewhat just like the same way some people see that in me like it's just like your personality is different where it's like you know whatever you try to do you can tell you're gonna put your all into it and shit Thank and you, it was bro. Appreciate kinda, it. and i was like you know because i'm not gonna lie like me and talk about that shit a lot in basketball relations like that's how me and him always stayed like tight because we saw that in each other on the courts mm-hmm. and it was almost like i seen that in you in the courts that you was just like any given moment like you could be locked in the zone and it's like that's the shit that gets applied to music yeah. with the realest fools and i kind of stick around fools that had that same type of drive and shit because i know they're gonna turn that to something else and i think that when you started putting out your shit because it was like all right you was putting your best foot forward and you was like i'm gonna like research this shit i'm gonna learn how to mix my shit mm-hmm. not a lot of people when they decide they want to do music have that book like how many people when you decide they want to do music go out and like try to do the mauricio thing like figure out how to do it all they just be like nah like i'm gonna just find someone who's gonna put me on or put out a song or like some shit like that like yeah. once they get the bug i think it's a variety of reasons because and you, the thing is like I mean, I caught the bug and I went and did my own thing, but people catch bugs on their own. Like, it could be a, that's, like, it's a, it's a root of, you know, starting, like, because for me, I guess you could say the bug was when I was, like, early, early on when I was learning piano. Like, I enjoyed music. I liked playing music. I liked playing with, like, instruments back then, but I didn't like doing certain things, so I stopped, and, like, I just took a long-ass break. So I guess maybe that was the bug, and then later it kind of restarted the fire, and I took it further and like expanded it in way different ways but like but what hmm. i'm saying with that is like it's a different bug so like maybe there could be bugs for I people i guess that's a good question how you could say like people get into it like maybe they do get into it for just trying to do something like they're trying to get famous real quick or they just want to have like the they attention make, bug and shit yeah. like that like that you can catch that too but exactly like they make like a meme song or something like that and then they're just like you know what this is kind of fun though like i could just kind of be creative and do whatever i want and then like from that spawns someone really cool you never know you know you know what i mean like there's a lot of different avenues that people can get into it and that people get really deeper in. I wonder, like, when did you catch, like, I guess looking at those as two separate bugs, I wonder when did you catch, like, the first musical, like, inclination? Like, when did you feel like, oh, I feel good music? Like, even on a fan tip outside of making music, like, were you bro, always, like, heavy into the shit? i say my freshman year, bro, um, I was going to school in Cleveland High School, man, in the Valley, and uh, the homies. See? Uh, I was playing basketball. I was trying to play. You feel me? So I'm hanging around the whole basketball team. And all I do is listen to music. Like, YG was popping during that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, a bunch of people, TDE was really going off, Kendrick, all of them. You feel me? And I was still listening to, like, Kid Cudi. So, like, (laughs) niggas is lucky. Like, I'm a bad guy. Yeah. It was roasting. Um, You know, when I'm in the court, whatever, we hooping or whatever, after they roasting. Like, oh, you listen to Kid Cudi? Like, this ain't middle school, bro. Like, you you listen to mainstream music and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mainstream, what you know what I'm saying? Like I've been listening to this stuff. Like I was in the um, Tyler the Creator before he was popping and stuff like in middle school. You know what I'm saying? So like I was catching the wave already. I was already listening to music. But I think it was after that I started like really getting into it. But I feel like that was good for me because I kind of detached from mainstream for like the first time, but at a good age. You know what I'm saying? So I caught the bug quick, bro. I I'm listening to everything. That heavy. Yeah. That that was a monumental time. Like when Odd Future and all that shit was coming out. Like that's Man. when I was like downloading music and starting yeah. to go out of what was just hey. like given to me. Pause. Hey, y'all remember LimeWire, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, for sure. Yeah. LimeWire, bro. Bro, yeah. we, bro, we rapped sure. about that in our first one of the first songs we made. Yeah, yeah. It was like literally about. Oh, okay. I gotta talk about this. That's crazy now. Yeah. So there's a song we made called Oh Eight Nano, and it's about the like the, the iPod Nano yeah. because like we had this conversation and it's this conversation happened maybe in one of our first talks of making music of like how did music get introduced to you mm-hmm. and i made a song about that like he shot me a crazy beat and i wrote a song about how music came into my life like almost like the different moments too like i was like how when i heard it as a kid when i heard it and i led to when i gave the homie my ipod nano and he downloaded shit on LimeWire. Mm-hmm. And there's a bar where I'm even saying, like, I don't give a shit if that's just illegal. Like, mm-hmm. give me the, like, LimeWire. Like, I say, I'm all, I'm like, download that shit illegally. Lime, LimeWire naps for as long as it's free. Free. Yeah. I was like, download that shit illegally. <laughs> <laughs> but it was because I realized that was when music changed for me. Yeah. Because that's when I started to put my personal taste in music. Yeah. Like, a lot of shit. find it. You know what I'm saying? I started to you like, what I liked and shit like that. And then I started to be able to do that. And it was crazy because that's what, that's what builds unique sound and unique people and shit like that because those uh, experiences really cultivate you and who you are especially in those formative years bro mm-hmm. no I agree Limar was amazing I've never once been able I can't remember a time in my life where I simultaneously like found so much stuff that I loved and like was able to put it all onto like a device I could carry around with me mm-hmm. 
and like completely destroy my family computer mm -hmm. just because LimeWire is like the the what's it called um I would get like a virus almost every time like, I download a song but it was so worth it like computer be so slow but it's like yo I need this I need this new song I need this next song I ain't gonna cap you gonna get them uh, you think you download one of the songs and it'll be some uh, little video clip and it's like I did not have sex with that woman <laughs> they'll be so like, burned yeah you'd be like what is that the president like I did not download this <laughs> like what bro that shit was annoying the soldier boy song Oh, hey, crazy. I even get me Bro. started. But, hey, okay. I know we was going to talk about the current state of hip hop, you know, or like just music. And now in we're general. in 08. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brought it but back okay. Let's just keep it 100, though. Like, I feel like, especially Soulja Boy, and just even like how we like were able to find our own music, that really contributed to how music is today. And I just want to give that type of respect. Because that, that man, Soulja Boy, had the, you know, regular, like, you know, uh, crank that you with the dance you know what I'm saying that's like culture you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but then this man made a rock version you know what I'm saying and that one was hard too you remember that bro I don't think none of us would be here without Soulja Boy I ain't gonna cap bro he changed the game I just wanna give the credit real fast right. not saying he's super dope just wanna get the credit cause we gonna get there yeah he changed the internet marketing game changed the whole music game he was the first on like that on that whole wave and he was the first if I remember correctly on like the ringtone, ringtone. wave mm -hmm. like that was crazy I remember when ringtones were like the shit both ringtones <laughs> and like key. ring back tones when you used to call someone and you used to hear the music bro, like, I would buy them <laughs> with I no money say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be begging my mom for like 80 cents so I could buy them <laughs> like come on dog. like <laughs> like the early phone like money plots were low key completely different from like right now like kids today have like low-key smart computers mm -hmm. like they can make music they can film themselves they can do whatever they want in their hand now you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but like for us like we're trying to buy ringtones i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you let know, me get a few cents your little rinky dink phone and <laughs> exactly. shit you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's just because it was the cool thing and yeah. like you you know it's one of the things almost like you listen to it and you're just like yo this is possible like before you just hear the uh, on me the little vibration uh, you know what i mean or like you know you're waiting and then Eventually, you're just like, you start hearing some tunes, and you're like, whoa, like, I thought this was, like, only if you call, like, a Bro, my bank homie has like some crazy you... shit. When I used to call his house phone, dog, mm -hmm. or, like, his little phone, it would be some crazy shit playing, like, in the ring back, like, some Fantasia or some shit his mom had. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey. I remember it was real. <laughs> Fantasia was, was real for a minute. <laughs> I ain't gonna care. But, yeah, it wouldn't be no answers, neither. You would just hear her singing, like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> But I just remember, I remember wanting that so bad, but, like, at the time, it was kind of like, well, what is this? It was such new tech that, like, you know, I remember my parents being like, why, why do you need this? Like, why is this a thing? You know what I mean? Bro, that's it's, it, it comes full circle, I think, because, like, right now, a lot of us are able to do what we can do because of the accessibility of us marketing to the Internet at our own will and just being able to customize every little aspect of, like, when you click on the story, the music that plays, the mm -hmm. when you, like, that shit all started there with the first customization, like, being able to customize what calls on your phone, like, how your ringtone sounds. That's so true. That's interesting. Yeah, bro. I just want to shout out to all the Fantasia babies. <laughs> like, if you was raised oh, yeah. by a single, like, mom, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know Fantasia. And y'all know where she came from. You know what I'm saying? You was watching American Attitude. Yeah, so it, it was the homies pad that had the strong ones. single mom. You that was what I was saying? calling. That's what yeah, I was calling. Yeah, that's Let's just put it out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We cool with she that. She was a G too, though. Like, she would have to take care of the homies. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, God, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Growing up, bro, my house was the spot, nigga. We got the PlayStation and we got movie nights because we got Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Swear to God. So, shout out to all the Fantasia babies. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> But fucking, I feel like shit. Going off of the, that, like that era, like, what do you think music is coming to and about to be right now? Thinking out the Man. aspect of the Fantasia Babies and basically ninety nine seven, ninety nineteen ninety eight, fucking two thousand, bro. I know homies that are from two thousand right now, bro. Isn't that nutty to you? Like, I got homies that's born in two thousand. Okay, hold on. You don't even understand, bro. Born <laughs> in this century. Like, I was working at a community center with kids, right? And I'm playing with the kids or whatever, you know, I'm interacting with them. I, like, build a little relationship with them, right? And then I go and check the records for the first time, you know, when the parents come in and pick them up, whatever. And I see they was born in 2016. What the fuck? Bruh, I'm looking at, or, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, <laughs> or like 15, 14. And I'm looking at the paper. I'm looking back at the kid. Like, bro, I was a sophomore. Like, you're old, you know what I'm saying? You be looking like stuff different. So, like. Most definitely, but my bad. What was your actual question? You talk about. I was music, thinking right? about like the people, more so specifically that generation, like our generation. So, like, like what is it? What is it looking like now? What do you think? As what far as heading to, as, as far as, as music. music, right? Okay, yeah, music. I just want to say that 
it's definitely just mixing. There's so much mixing going on right now. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially how we were uh, touching on LimeWire and stuff like that, right? It's kind of good we're coming back to this. So, like, LimeWire, you could go and download anything. You know what I'm saying? And, like, especially with YouTube coming out around that time, too. Like, early YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could really watch anything. And, like, a lot of people were taking advantage of that and just putting random stuff on the internet. Now, I know they've been doing it on MySpace and stuff, but that's, like, my my older brother and stuff. You know what I'm saying? For us, it was, like, YouTube. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, LimeWire, stuff like that. And, like, Facebook a little later down the line. Mm-hmm. But, bro, like, you could listen to, like, the new Kanye. You know what I'm saying? And then right next to that, you could listen to, like, Metallica. Like, I listened to Metallica in middle school. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, Frantic. Like, that was my shit. Like, I know some rock songs. I listened to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't did the you, only one. Did you fuck one. with the puppet master or some of shit? Of course, bro. That was my shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't fuck with crazy metal, but I used to bump that for some reason. I, and I'm going to give it credit to a guitar hero, bro. Let's keep it 100%. Yes. Did y'all you play go that? On that. Oh, my I'm goodness. the only homie that never did. But I know okay. everyone in the world did. So, y'all go ham. Bro. <laughs> I want to give credit to Guitar Hero, bro. Because I was already listening to it, but I didn't really start really fucking with it until I was like, oh, like, I heard that in a video game. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's hard. I started changing the game, and I started listening to rock from there more, like, because I was just used to it. I'm playing the game all day and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. No, I agree wholeheartedly, dude. My, uh, like, my uncle and my, like, my, that side of the family was so into, like, Metallica. They were putting us on early, like, Mm -hmm. Metallica, Leonard Skinner, uh, ACDC, whole, like basically any kind of like uh, hair metal from like the 80s, 70s, 80s. Were you so, fucking like, with like contemporary rock too? Like Green Day and like Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah, I was oh, on yeah. that. Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers, amazing. System uh, of Green it down. Day, I was digging with what, like, what they were putting on the radio. Like I wasn't too much of like looking deeper into it, but Red Hot Chili Peppers for sure. Killers, um, whole bunch of like yeah, they look you guys <laughs> like dude i i loved love love loved rock music it was just part of like my growing up but because they loved the that music when they saw guitar hero come out they were hyped on it like so i remember my uncle bought it for my cousin and so i used, i used basically spent like my entire childhood at my uh at my cousin's house for the most part because we went to the same school and so it, like we would get picked up together and then i would go hang out there um a couple hours and then come home later but it was lit because he was like my older brother basically mm-hmm. like and i also had my little cousin who was like way younger so kind of like my little brother but regardless i'd go in and spend there like every day hours there right and they got guitar hero and it was the shit we used to play that so so much we ended up getting to like the expert level and then we would get like each of the new games every time they came out and then when rock band came out that was like when i first met like my stepdad and we made a little bet and he ended up um getting me rock band as like a like the win of the bet and mm-hmm. it was oh man that changed my life dude because yeah, that's when the i first started playing with the, yeah, drums. the drums and stuff yeah dude oh man the drums the so guitar this how, so this is like, how you know i i ended up not being an engineer <laughs> so i never fucked with video games like yeah. that I, I i liked playing video games but i was on the san andreas in 2k bro and like whenever the homies want to get into call of duty all that shit i was always like Nah, bro. You like don't play I don't. Kyle, bro? I, I no, bro. I tried it, and not gonna lie, bro. It was like I didn't really get even like the idea of video games. Maybe until like I started making music with Mauricio, and like I had to take this math class. Yeah. And I had and I had to pass college math, and I hate math. So it's like all that goes hand in hand. Like I hate math, hate video games. I wasn't a technology <laughs> head, bro. <laughs> I like real world <laughs> shit. You said shapes and numbers is like no. <laughs> but fucking, I realized yeah, I, I could be good at anything that I put my mind to like with practice because of sports and all that shit yeah. so eventually like I took that shit with math and I was like damn I'm gonna pass this shit I'm gonna just go to tutoring and I'm gonna fucking be on it but at the same time I started playing Fortnite yeah. on my phone and I started seeing myself improve at it because it was the memorization yeah. and I realized that that was the same muscle that I don't like using that muscle of like memorizing yeah. like one million little steps and shit so I did it but it was almost like okay I like to use this as a release yeah. but I don't live within that world, but I understood it mad years later that like a lot of people live within that release. Like they fuck with that. Like it's yeah. like it's like a therapeutic almost to be like to it's like it's like brain games and shit. Bro, I yeah. I'll let you go. Yeah. I I'll tell you like straight up, like for me, cause I look at everything like on uh, an aspect of like skills, you know what I'm saying? 
the skill of playing video games is one of those that like everybody needs bro it's very calculated you know what i'm saying you know exactly what you're gonna do before you do it you're very textile all that shit bro like i tell you sometimes bro like when i'm playing call of duty like snapping on people like turn around corners like i'm already knowing where they're gonna be at so i'm already mm -hmm. turning like i'm aiming for the right spot those are skills that you lucky kind of just pick up regular and you take them out so when i play basketball i do the same thing bro your foot off i'm finna <laughs> boom see you know i get saying? it in that mm -hmm. shit yeah. I, I didn't understand it on the computers and shit there was always like a disconnect like with math yeah. and shit like that but once i saw it was the same shit i was like oh i just like this shit more yeah bro <laughs> i just mm -hmm. like this shit more. You, it's the bro, same thing once you start playing 2k watch you be a better basketball player i promise you i put yeah. that on my mama bro high key you just start picking up you think different yeah. you have a different type of approach to basketball just because you've been doing it in a specific way with your brain on this video game straight up you're gonna start doing different shit i like to beat it though i used to always play beat it if like mm -hmm. the homie ever gave me the sticks on Guitar Hero because I didn't know I wasn't well versed in it, oh. I'd be like, "Go to Michael Jackson, beat it." <laughs> 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 I'm, like, I'm beating that one. <laughs> no, for me, I'm on like the opposite spectrum for you, like of you know the video game love because I, I love video games, dude. I grew up with video games. Like I said, I used to go to my cousin's house all the time and play video games, damn near daily. Um, and then they got in, they introduced me to get my own console. And then when my stepdad first came into like the the picture he had his xbox and like he, that really put me on because i was like that's when i first got call of duty and then my dangerously crazy addiction to that game uh, dude i was so into call of duty for years i still am i fuck with it but not to that degree at all like yeah. i used to i like other games you know what i mean but i've always played video games throughout my entire life and i always was really into numbers like i loved math math was my favorite class in high school yeah, i need an essay school game through general <laughs> on me hey i do want to say i feel like video games did uh really impact how people like view and listen music just because like they had different types especially like you could put Ooh. different in video games you know what i'm saying i love mm -hmm. video game music bro. yeah bro. that's fast tony hawk bro skate three you know what i'm saying all the so, skate games bro all the that's jams a bro but i feel like all of that so i just kind of want to get to this point um yeah. all of that kind of accumulates to like basically why music is the way it is right now you know what i'm mm. saying it's a lot of mixing bro like um i think P it's it's more so like there's a thing right now called pc music you're gonna talk about that later if you're cool with that yeah yeah well, but, um, i think at this we talk about pierre born too because yeah. i see what you're getting at right now you know what i'm saying you're i was trying the, to set it up the yeah. little like the nuancedness within music like how yeah. music is getting more technical it's getting technical you know what i'm saying so the more technical it gets the more you gotta have to like you know alter things in a manner that's like not necessarily one genre you know what i'm saying like a lot of people are using a whole bunch of drums from different like bro i be using edm drums sometimes when i make trap beats just because i know they're gonna hit harder you know what i'm saying but i do want to move on to pierre because i feel like he's a whole like you get so much like finished in just having that conversation i feel like we pierre. can have an interesting convo about that because i mean i i think you're familiar with pierre born right somewhat i've listened to a couple things yeah because and i think the funny thing is is that um me and Mauricio have a constant ongoing joke because I feel like like I like play with Cardi a lot, but obviously Mauricio <laughs> doesn't like play with Cardi a lot. But I mean, there's a funny I reference within that is that like Pierre Bourne is like the shadow of that. Obviously, like made Magnolia, yeah. produced his whole original sound, and like. But outside of that, he doesn't get like I feel like the respect he deserves for like what he brings to the table and what he does like aesthetically. It's like almost very like massive i feel like mm -hmm. like not in how much people like it but massive in what he's able to do like he's able to do basically what he's done for other artists i feel like which other artists out of like like i'm saying he, he's able to do got the list for you he's able to okay. do what he's done for other artists like playboy cardi like in that sense but for himself just not the only difference i see is that people are caught up in like publicity and hype of like who an individual is mm -hmm. like people like he's not like the coolest guy or the motherfucker that people just like well i mean that but it's why that's why i love his shit because like knowing me you know it's like that's never the thing for me so it's like when i get into your shit i'm like wow bro like i can see that you have the sauce They're like you put other people up but you you can do it all on your own it's just that you probably he's probably like you he probably doesn't care to do that Mm. He's like, nah, I can do this shit, and I'm making money off of it. Like, I make, I made Magnolia, bro. I'm, I'm on. But it's like, I, on my projects, I don't want to be a personality. I just want to be Life of Pierre Bourne, one, two, three, four, and I want to do all the pitch shifting and like all the yeah. voices different. Like, you don't mm -hmm. even know it's me. It's yeah, just good is, songs. Like, yeah, a lot of similarities on there. I can see that. Like, don't get me wrong. And then this is what I've like what I've said to you before, as well. Like, Playboy, 
If we're gonna talk about Playboy, we're gonna talk about Pierre, not Playboy. That's why we're most we're trying to talk about Pierre Bourne. But I was just using it as a reference as like he's his producer. Mm-hmm. But like me and this fool are like like fuck with them heavy. Yeah. And my I'm gonna lie, so he's one of the only fools I've known that I've ran into across the internet that's like. Yo, people are sleeping on this fool. And I be saying that in my personal conversations with people, but I stop because most people don't know who he is. Mm-hmm. So, the thing, <laughs> so it's like, I can't even. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to get at with that is because my critiques when I come, to, when I say that, like, when it comes to Playboy Cardi, is like him, his music, is, I've always said, is good. Like, it's definitely like a jam. The production wise itself is good, but him, like, Playboy Cardi as an individual, to me, seems too. Um, monochromatic seems too much in his own one lane which i totally get because that applies for a a lot of artists it's not just playboy cardi like there's a million artists that are out there who are just not that much there for you to grasp on exactly and the thing is like it gets to a certain point where if you're a certain song if i can't tell the distinguishing factor between certain songs it gets it gets to the point where it's like is is this really you know i mean like how, what, what more am I getting away with this because it's to me the way I always looked at it is like if you're always doing the same thing because it's always comparative right like think of it like competi- like basketball sports like you're always trying to better yourself like and get better but if you're always shooting the same three you're only um, or like you're always shooting from the same spot right your only judgment of who you are is if you make that shot or not because then if you don't make that shot from that spot it's like oh well, he, f- he failed he fucked up that's the one thing he's good for and he didn't do it you know what I mean so peop- I feel like people sometimes paint themselves in this light. And so when they do paint themselves in this light, then it gets to a certain point where like, well, you're doing this thing. And it's like, yeah, you're really good at that one thing. But if you don't do it really to the fullest potential, it, it seems lacking to what you do because that's all you do. You know what I mean? So that's my main concern with Playboy Cardi is that I feel like very often like... In a world right now where ever a lot of people can do a lot of shit like Pierre, he's, he's doing like one thing. And that's kind of essentially what we're getting Ooh. at is like we just view the other fool as doing everything so it kind of adds to your point is that it makes Playboy Cardi look lackluster yeah <laughs> you know it kind of adds to your point like it makes him that hey. because like your producer can do everything you can do and more bro so basically <laughs> I just want to I want to go back to a time where like you know like who he's produced for or like just kind of his track record so I really want to get into this topic alright so Pierre Moore he's produced for Juice World, Amine Gunna Gucci Lil Boat you know what I'm saying Lil Yachty that's the guy right there. Anybody on SoundCloud, low key, kind of got their sound from Pierre, but we'll get to that. Like, get to that too. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll see it. It's in the production. The early production comes from Pierre. You know what I'm saying? All of his other stuff, Trippy Red. He did a lot of production for Trippy Red early on. Young Thug, uh, Lil Wayne. And the Wayne. albums I'm seeing you're you're looking at are ones from like 2016. Bro, mm-hmm. some of these are like the newest stuff though. Like he's on Kanye's album, the uh, Jesus yeah. King, the very controversial one. He got like three or four. Oh, I like that credits. song. I like that song he did. Pierre Warren is on the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you talking about like 2016 and then like 2021, like still racking them up on like your biggest names probably, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the songs you didn't even know appear because they're up there, you know what I'm saying? Like you're That's not gonna I mean. think about it like that, right? So there's just a whole bunch, right? Like um, Triple Red, we already went over that. Kanye West brought that up. Um, Young Thug, of course. Chance the Rapper, that's like a, I guess a little gem because I didn't even know that one. You know what I'm saying? That's different. Uh, he has his own little production people that he's around, his sauce house. So he has a lot of music with them. You know, Jelly, uh, Chavo, all them. Uh, Pierre Bourne, of course. But the point is, is like, this man produced for everybody. So you can say that that's a lot like, of your that's, favorite that's songs. Beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, I a lot of your that. favorite songs come from this one man, right? Okay. Then on top of that, right, the way that his production is has, like, changed all of music because everybody's emulating that sound. There's so many Playboy Cardi's now because there's so many wannabe Pierre Bournes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's really that simple, bro. That I agree he, with you. That He's making the entire wave. That I agree with you that, like... Well, one, all right, I'll, this kind of, this plays into like a double point in this one point that I feel like not even just Pierre Bourne with a lot of producers. I don't, There's a lot. I don't know like the producers behind most songs because they're just not advertised. Like when yeah. I grew up as a kid and it's just hilarious because me being a producer, like you would think that I'd be more into looking into like who they are, but I've, I acknowledge that like it's part of the fact too like some of the times like I'll just it'll be overlooked like it's part of the like the overlooked thing so I like there's a lot of producers that more often than not when people be like yo you know this one I'm like no I don't like just mm-hmm. because I never personally I just never really took too much of the time to like look into a lot of these background uh, artists but a lot of them are coming to light which is really cool because you see that there's so many people that really do make and like sing it from the side of like when you do produce a song like you really 
have certain controls over a song and how much you really do and push it in certain ways. Like mm-hmm. certain songs you listen to and like the production, like how you're saying with the Pierre Bourne, um, with Pierre Bourne and like how he made certain sounds and he's pushing it to the point where people want to emulate it. Like that pushes it more so than sometimes the artist itself where the artist can push it. But that's why I was kind of curious to see who he was working with because you can make arguments as well of like depends on the songs and individual like perhaps the lyricist was the one that was pushing it more so like kind of influence on that song that's possible you, you know, know that's what I mean? always it, it always it always, it's always contextual but more often than not like production has like a huge like i'd say maybe like a 75 percent say like mm-hmm. because it's how it sounds it's how it's gonna like ultimately come across and how it's finishing and you know bringing that whole glue together but yeah so it is really interesting to see that i'm actually really curious because i want to listen i'm gonna see which songs because yeah. a lot of those artists you named are people that i really do listen to and yeah they're so nice. there's, i wouldn't like I'm, I'm kind of i wouldn't put it past like like you said some of my favorite songs being like pierre born uh produced songs produced, so I'm really or inspired. yeah yeah for me i, I noticed like, it when i got into his shit mm-hmm. like, I, <laughs> like i didn't know until i listened to his projects that i was yep. like oh like there's something like whatever his it factor is in these songs is like some shit that's like like i like in other songs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i'm okay. like oh I, that's what i noticed and that's like another thing i was gonna bring up is just him like rapping right so like you know what i'm saying like oh Sometimes the swag comes from like the actual lyricist or the rapper or whatever, but it's like. Wait, he raps as well. Yes, that's what that's I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Like on all those projects, he raps and nobody like, knows. Okay, like okay. this is the best example I can give, and I always like admired him for this. Um, you know, everybody's doing this little uh, internet concert thing now. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm-hmm. They can't go out because of COVID. You know what I'm saying? Shows whatever, right? So they're doing uh you know rolling live loud uh, live on like YouTube or whatever, and you know kids are watching. I think it was Twitch or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this man went and took advantage of the whole like bad situation and really changed the game again bro he released like he only did an entire set during that little live concert of his new album and like real fans have been waiting for the new album it's like there's a hype for it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. kind of like uh, playboy cardi right he had a lot of hype for a whole lot of red and like a lot of people think he kind of you know missed they say it hit but it's real like up in the air you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. And, like, you could say he took advantage of it his way and it worked, right? But let's be honest, there's less Playboy Cardi fans now. You know what I'm saying? But Pierre Bourne, who's on the up, he just changed the whole game on the way up. He released a whole set of just T-Lot 5, which is his new album. So the entire concert is just listening to the next the next album. But it's live. You know what I'm saying? You can only get it here. You know what I'm saying? So it brings value to the actual concert. Change the game, bro. And he's doing everything himself, man. Producing it, rapping it. He's the only nigga on the stage. There's nobody behind him that's, like, playing his music for him. Like, people got their DJs. He's the DJ. He do the sound checks. You know what I'm saying? It's one man. He's kind of like the Trap JPEG. He's, bro. Okay, okay. He's hard, bro. I kinda, that's how, kind of how I look at him. Like, he's very much so, like... And that was really cool. I remember seeing that online. Like, I think you're the one who posted about it. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, it was a live performance. And it just looked like... Kind of like he took real advantage, like some shit we talk about of like the virtual live performance and being like, yo, we got the tools to make all the music cinematic and fucking affect how we want it. Like, and it's virtual shit. Let's just make this shit a virtual performance. Like, have uh-huh. crazy. It looked like he was really into it. Like, outside of the resources they gave him, mm-hmm. it looked like he was like, oh, I was built for this. He owned it. He owned you know it. And he like, like, changed oh, like, it. This is what I was built to do. <laughs> like, I don't like virtual concerts. I'm like, bro, those are the weirdest things ever. I don't want to like sit on Twitch and watch somebody dance on stage. Like, mm-hmm. But I wanted to watch this because Pierre Bourne was performing the whole T-Lop 5. Like, this is the only place you can get it. It's like how people would drop their music on Apple Music, and that's like the luxury. Like, oh, we could just stream it without having to, like, listen to previews on SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? Something, something like that. Like, that's kind of what it is now with this online concert thing. It's like, I'm not going to go watch Playboy Cardi's online concert. I'm not going to go watch. I did. I watched you it. Know, I saw it only because there was so much controversy. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Uh but I'm not gonna go like actively look for like, you know, who else? Like a, a little Mosey, yeah. You know, live concert, bro. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely looking for Pierre Bourne's, bro. That's the only way I can hear T L Five, bro. I just bumped it like six hey. times already. You feel Have me? you ever seen Cardi live though? I've never seen him live. He's, bro. he's all right. He he. And see I get him live. it. I get it. Why people like him because I have seen him live and I've been in like the pit. You know, you know, I'm not broke your arm, man. No, I'm not <laughs> in the pit. <laughs> you know. Yes, sir. You know, I'm not. You know me. Yeah, I'm like, I'm saying, I don't like it looks sketchy. Pit, but I'm, I was like right outside the pit, and you see people get in. I see some niggas climb the tree, it. bro. I was in the pit, and there was some. There was two heads on the tree swinging his shit. Hell no. <laughs> and he was looking like it was that one song. He's like, look at these niggas. Look at <laughs> look he was look saying it. <laughs> it was definitely wild. is crazy. Like the, like his his concerts definitely do go up. That's without a doubt. But 
like I, as like a casual listen to listen not outside to of yeah, like yeah. A, a live venue. And I, and I'm less and that goes it. to our point yeah. of like this era and adapting to the era like of the COVID shit, the online shit. Yeah. Pierre Bourne was able to adapt to that because he was set up for it. The same way like you mm-hmm. or somebody is set up for it in a way. It's like I'm not built on my image. Yeah, his I'm not set. built on that. Like. I'm I'm set up for this shit. Like yeah. I'm built on just like the the digital shit. He's building his image just you off know? his skills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Him being able to take advantage of it like that is building up his image. And it works in this era. It's like it's perfect, perfect for this era where it's like you can't be out there. <laughs> and you that's can't why get I think, those literal that's why I think he slept on. I feel like most people have caught on. I ain't gonna cap. Like I think you're a man who appreciates music. Like you actually know it. You study it. You're a fan. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't catch you on right away. This, you know what I'm saying? It's your career. It's your job. It's your life, you know? So, like, you could see something like this, and even if you weren't hip to it, you could catch on and enjoy it. Exactly. Some people, they just hating. Like, they don't even look at it, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm like, if you're anybody, <laughs> I'll wait for those. Yeah. We got to do those. <laughs> so, like, you know, if you're anybody who's, like, interested in music or, like, you really, like, learning the game, like, Pierre Warren's the, the go. like, you need to be looking at him, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how you can sleep, bro. And I'm like, if you don't like the music, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? But the way bro doing it is how everybody should be doing it. Respect, that's the way. I respect the hustle. It sounds like this fool is out there doing what he wants to do, and he's just doing it all by himself, which is super. That's how we'll definitely play some of his shit in the fucking in the in sleeper the playlist that like we'll be creating while we do this. We'll, yeah. we will like add some of his shit because okay, like okay. he definitely has some songs. One of my favorite songs by him is SOS Girl. I feel like I played that girl, shit yeah. so many times, bro. So like much, over like bro. that break, it's like. I feel like I could be the number one streamer of that. <laughs> and you know the little uh, Apple like rewinds. Yeah. If you go back to like 2018, it's just Pierre, Pierre, and then Pierre again. Like you know for 2021 when it comes out. Cause I really be rocking that. Okay. But, okay. Oh, I don't know if y'all want to talk about other people as well. Y'all kind of just. I know we're all fans of music. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. wondering if I could have like a little bit of your time to see like what y'all listen to. On you know that same wave. Just um, anything. You just give me like, give me like five artists that you kind of just want to speak about real fast. You know what I'm saying? Just, I don't know, man. Okay. I mean, if I have to talk about people that I think, the one person off the top of my head, I even did like a, a little like class assignment on this person. Yeah. Um, his name is David Diggs. Okay. He's a uh, the lead singer of, or the lead vocalist for. Um, clipping yeah um and he's done like a whole bunch of other stuff as well like he's produced he's um rapped lyricized he's been on tv shows he's been on um, a slew of things he even helped like write a book Mm -hmm. like he's someone that's just very creatively inclined in a lot of different ways and does a lot of different things right what what would you classify his genre what would you say experimental experimental okay for sure like there, that group, I mean, Wesley can maybe attest for it or not, is one of the most, like, experimental groups that i found in, like, the rap category. Like, they're experimentally rap, but I don't even want to just say rap because it's rap in the sense that, like, he's a lyricist and he raps most of it, but, mm-hmm. like, the beats themselves go in so many different ways that it Be- could be, like, some... I feel like some, you throw, like, some, some dubstep in a blender. I mean, in with, sense, like, hard rock. It's, like, <laughs> dubstep in a blender mixed with hard rock mixed with spoken word because a lot of... Because well, then stuff, that's his aspect, like, yeah. what he does on it. Mm-hmm. What that's he smooth. does on it, and, but, like... That's different. Yeah. Y'all then, heard about uh, Death Grips? Yeah, I love Death That's, like, yeah. that's similar vein. Like, yeah. I would definitely... I wouldn't put them far as, like, you know, far off in the family tree. You yeah, know what I'm very... Yeah, it's exactly. Very, very close. Um, I would definitely check out, like, listening to him, but he himself is just such an interesting character, and, like, he... He's been on a lot of the stuff that I feel is like when I listen to him, there's so many I haven't listened to I can't think of another artist where I can say I listen to stuff and I'm like, damn, this just sounds like so different. Like each time because he they like that group, because it's him and like two producers mm-hmm. um that do like the production, like mixing and mastering, I think. And so they do it's like a group of three of them. But they they're ki- I mean, they just push the boundaries in so many ways where I listen to this stuff, I'm like this is crazy like I, every time I can expect something different something new even though they like and they did things where like where did like say one thing that caught me that was new that I was just like I've never seen this before in music like in my experience was they put out a song they put out like an EP right and the first song is like their version of the song and then they had like six or seven producers come in and remix the same song like six or seven times and then they did like an acapella version at the end and like a whole bunch of things and it was just kind of like a kept on sauce version like i know they've been like people that drop like a single remix like a double remix but it was like a whole ep that was based on a whole like slew of just different 
remixes on this one thing and it was taken in so many different directions it was so cool because you see it like it was taken because like I don't want to make the comparison of because I've seen like some dubstep projects where people put out like uh, or like electronic projects where people put out things that are like on the similar Shout vein. Dubstep too. I love dubstep. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Like that's, I, that's early middle school too. Oh yeah. Dude. Another example of music just blending. EDM to like techno in general is yeah. the shit. Like um, without a doubt. But in those veins, like they they get very close, right? But this was an interesting project because it was so like each song sounded like distinctly different from the rest yeah. but it still had that glue of like the same vocal and it was like whoa this is it was just different right at the time for me when i first listened to it like i was like yo i i still haven't to this day i think i've seen another project put out in that sense and then like that and even like their songs are always so conceptual so thematic that it's always like super interesting because it's not very they're by no means i'd say popular like they're popular maybe in like the underground crowd but i don't really hear i've yet to meet someone else who's like quick on saying like oh it's kind of rare to find a head that just be talking about clipping like yo i fuck with clipping that's my yeah, group yeah. like yeah and i'm and i'm super thankful to yeah, like my close friend for putting me on and if he didn't i wouldn't have been put on Bro, yeah. I, I was talking about that with my friend this weekend like and i'll dive into that too about like my music taste but i was talking about the homie shout out connor right mm, i was exactly, talking to yeah. my homegirl about that and she, just saying how like because she doesn't really know about that like in general how like a lot of the music I remember initially getting put on in like freshman year at college was like hella through Connor, bro. Like I remember him bumping like Brock Hampton before they was really even like out. Yeah. Like I remember him bumping Saba before he was even out. Like, and it was just naughty. Saba was hard, bro. Like this fool was. I remember like, and I met him at the same time I started kicking it with Mauricio because he was Mauricio's homie. You fuck yeah. with Saba? I love Saba, bro. Yeah, that's your homie. Oh yeah, bro. No, like. like that, no, like not he's not. I don't know. <laughs> no, Saba like that. Yeah, okay. like, like his homie was the one who put like <laughs> like us oh, on him. Say less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I fuck with Saba but like that hard. shit was like in our like when I was really like finding artists, I really was inspired by and not knowing like he was putting me, showing me people that were made, like different. Like you know, certain people that just like I guess can find stuff that maybe isn't exactly like popping or celebrated at the time. Yeah, yeah. But we know is like gonna pop and is like intrinsically like dope. Yeah, you know, it, it's super true, dude. Honestly, super shout out to Connor. He was. And I've said this to, to many people before, but he's like one of my biggest. It's funny because I call I classify him as one of my biggest musical influences. Like that's like when we talk about people that made me make the genre of music and make me what I do today. Like I I owe like a huge thank you to Connor because he put me on a slew of different things. Yeah, like he's shout out who, Connor. He's because he could have been a homie to be honest. That could have just been on like I knew like some of the other shit. He could have just been bumping Weezer or some yeah. shit. But he personally took <laughs> the choice the to be like varied in that. Like because yeah. I love Weezer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying you could have stayed there and yeah. I'd have rocked with you because I fuck with Weezer, bro. He, <laughs> he, uh, he, he, put, he put was it on it. Like he was past that. Like I'm gonna keep going. He would put it on himself to like find music that no one like he was one of those people that at one point was really into finding like underground stuff stuff that wasn't popping yet and just to be like and it's funny because like he kind of influenced the group to also be in that sense so like we would all kind of start to try to branch out more and look for stuff that kind of wasn't on and it'd be a thing to if you could show like the homies be like yo check out this group there and you listen to a song like yo that's heat like how many followers do they have? Like a hundred, bro. I remember like, that shit. Bro. That was a thing for us. You know what I mean? And like he really put us onto that. And he was like constantly pushing forward, wanting to like find new stuff. And it's crazy. Like I'm so huh. thankful to him. So for within that, that like, I think who I talk about is my like one of my main influences is I'd have to talk about like JPEG, bro. Like oh, yeah. um, he's like you probably heard him because I have not post about that fool almost too much. I feel <laughs> like, but I think that JPEG Mafia is like. He's something that inherently spoke to like what I was, what I felt and resonated with, but then also was all on the shit that we were just talking about. Like with the Pierre Bourne shit, he was out there with the each set with his laptop out there, like just, but like yeah. a punk show where it's like, I'm gonna play my song and then I'm gonna perform my shit and I'm gonna change the song. Yeah. And it was like, and that was one thing to I me. I was watching some of that shit. And more to me was like, the crazy thing to me was almost like his name and his personality within it. Like I real, I didn't think that you could be. Whenever I see people stand up for, like, I guess, archetypes that maybe aren't represented in music, it always hits me in a certain way. Like, Capital Steez was the first person that did that for me back when I was in high school, where I was like, whoa, you can rap about shit like this? Yeah. And it's like, look, like, you know what I'm saying? And the dualness of it. Hey, Capital Steez, bro. That changed my life, bro. Like, that high key changed my life. Like, bumping American corruption, like. Like, absolutely insane. You couldn't even think of something like that during this time now, though. Like you, you know what I'm saying Like Bro you can and, put and it you out, hear that album like, And it's like Exactly the shit That's going on Like to think exactly. that That's like Some shit that was When I was in Like I was 16 That I was resonating with It almost like Hit me when I saw JPEGs I was like oh, Okay This is a guy That he's lyrical But at the same time 
it's about a message and it's about an aesthetic and mm-hmm. it's about a vibe and like and he's about chopping down the fat and i feel like at, at that point in time i had fell in love with that i fell in love with like alternative music that was almost bordering on the line of pop because in pop music they cut out all the fat mm-hmm. they only put the parts that just keep you on a roller coaster yeah and i was like i like that aspect of shit hey, we don't need all this slidey, shit bro. I just, hey, yeah, yeah i was like i like that <laughs> aspect of shit but i was like i need pop to fucking put hard. this into alternative music and i need to put this into the shit that like almost like force people to vibe with shit because they can't hop off the ride it's like you don't it's gonna be memorable like yeah. you may you don't hear this shit you're gonna be like oh shit like i remember this because each moment of it i couldn't take my fucking eyes off it and a lot of the also shit i mean if he was talking about was like i think the punk shit and androgynous shit for me he he, he fucking attacks like gender roles and he attacks fucking like norms within society like that non-conformist shit yeah, yeah, yeah. and i really oh, see oh, fools do that shit but i ain't see nobody do it in a way where it was like ill where i was like oh you're talented bro and I was like, yeah. I dig that. Like, I dig fools that are like, nah, I'm talented, but I'm going to use my talent for a specific cause and calling and reason. And I think those are the dudes I gravitate to more and, like, have kind of, like, shifted my perspective on music. Like, the fools is like, I got a calling in this shit, and I'm going to use that shit, and you can't really stop me in it because I'm talented as fuck. No, I agree. DJ Peg is... He is very, he's amazing at what he does. He's one of those people, he's in the same, like, experimental kind of oh, category. Oh, I got this in. Fucking, he's a veteran. He's a veteran. He's a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't fuck with that shit at all. He says, like, they got me because I was broke, and I was in high school, and I had no money. And it was that's like, fuck, they, they, like, just, they just got me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, he, but he, he went to Japan, and that's when he started producing and mixing and shit. And then he was, like, looking at the scene and was like, where do I want to go? Like, what is making, like, well, who's making this shit I'm in? You know where he went? Baltimore. Cause he saw the Ferguson shit Like all that shit That popped off And he was like Yo this is where I wanna be Because he saw that These people are standing up Like you know When them niggas mm-hmm. Were fighting and shit Cause he, the, there was a White supremacist and shit mm-hmm. And he went there Because there was already A scene there In music of fools Making like some punk shit You probably know about That shit over there In like Baltimore and shit I don't know what's good With all that But I found out About that shit from him And it was like I, I don't know I like seeing areas And shit where it's like I didn't know shit existed and then I find out it exists, and I'm like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" That is pretty trippy. But like, I, what I wanted to relay with JPEG is it's crazy. I love how he has that drive. What you see with him is that he fucks with what he does, and that he has the drive to just do it in any direction. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he does whatever he does, whatever he wants to do, and like, he can do it all. You know what I mean? Like, he'll produce it, he'll mix, he'll like uh, sing it, like he'll do the video, he'll re- like wild out, do the. I'm sure I know he's has like you know influence on like the the visuals like he really does push like that brand in himself like you were saying like pushing the jpeg mafia thing like and even that like symbolizing jpeg mafia yeah being like, like jpeg being a picture an image in a computer and kind of symbolizing himself to be a, a non synonymous with the internet yeah that stood out to me because it was like yo there's a smart the move. internet is what is what is giving maybe maybe under like service people like the voice and shit because we can spread out and we can find galvanize and find people that support you and shit like that and it's like that's the movement i want to be behind because in some sense some people look at like damn there's so much oversaturation but some people look at it as like this is the only way for me to get seen yeah like the fact that we're all interconnected is because i can be shown in the right light like you can see the other people that fuck with me in denmark and in europe and in Mm-hmm. because of the internet and that like that propelled me monumentally and what i want to do with music because so i was like whoa if he can do this if he can do it in tour dates we've seen this for coachella bro at the last coachella before shit closed that was such a great as set. an independent act bro this fool literally doesn't such have mad set. like mad fans and yeah. shit that shit was dumb inspiring i'm like bro i can be there like you did this shit yourself it was like i can go do that mm-hmm. that's what i'm talking about like i like seeing fools that are just like yo i did this shit on my own and now I'm here, bro. It's like, and people respect it. I think that was the eye opener too. I didn't think he was gonna garner all the fucking respect and shit that he did so quickly. Like he got some of his favorite fools to just work with him. Yeah, and just well, he's, be he's like, dope. He they recognize talent, you know. What I mean, I like to believe that, with, especially with a lot of people that he's worked with, he works with people who, like I said, recognize talent. They yeah, see James that, Blake, James Blake, you know, Rick Rubin, you know, when I'm pretty sure they have, yeah, uh, bro, some stuff together, like. Who else has he worked with off the top of my head? Oh, he worked with Denzel. I Denzel, know. that yeah. I forgot. Super I forgot who else as well. he worked with. A lot of people, bro. I was, really, I was bumping Denzel today, and I was really just thinking to myself, I was like, dude, Denzel is 
because I had. This I know you heard that new shit. I did. I actually put one in I one know of the sleepers. You, that that sh- it's I, we'll cool. talk about that yeah. later. <laughs> but I remember because I remember my sister asked me, and this kind of answers your question too earlier. She was like, "Who are like?" Because I was telling her that like, oh, some of these people are kind of tra- like I, some people are I so like short term. Like you could see like a short term career in certain acts, right? And then like. I was telling her at a time, I was like, in my opinion, there's certain people who are really hot right now who are roughly around our age range, you know, at least my, or my age range, because I'm a little older than my sister, but that are going to stand the test of time. And Denzel was at, like on that list of like top five. Like, I really do believe that he is, he's just sound, one sounds unique. Like, Bro, they when remixed he comes on, his you verse. Know, you know it's him. They put his verse on a whole different arrangement and it sounded better. It sounded crazy. Like, it was just it, was <laughs> it sounded wild, better. Like, it was like, and that that showed me. I was like, whoa, starting raps and people can stand the test of time. Like I could take your verse and implement that shit on some new shit. And when you sp- the way he spit it, it was with so much energy and life and like that. diction and shit that it's like that shit can be used forever in any way. He he sped it exactly how like you said with energy and life, and you can feel that when you listen to him. I mean, you you can feel that he's really giving it in, like giving himself into it and in doing so he pushes him not only himself but the music to better like levels and that's the stuff that stands the test of time because when you listen to old music mm-hmm. it, what does it do it makes you feel something right so if a song can make you feel something that's what matters and it's gonna make it's more like likely to make you feel something if the artist that's delivering it was feeling something when they did it yeah hopefully what are your Hopefully, What are yeah. your inspirations, bro? Like when you go in to make music, rapping or producing, like what do you bro, What do you look to? Or what I love do you sounds. I feel like that's a great question, by the way. I love sounds, bro. I absolutely love how sounds sound. <laughs> like <laughs> I like listening to play uh, Playboy Cardi sometimes. So let me just give a quick synopsis on Playboy Cardi. I'm not really a fan of the new stuff, bro. I think it's weird. But as far as like music, bro, art wise, it's fantastic. I ain't gonna lie. I gotta just go on record and say that, bro. At first, I wasn't fucking with it, but since I make music. I started like I was at the studio and I was talking to somebody. And I was like, "Yo, you heard that Cardi?" He's like, "Yeah, it's awesome." I was like, "Hell, nah, that shit trash." He was like, "Nah, bro." He was like, "It's good." He's like, "You gotta listen to it. Like, look past all the demon shit." And I was like, "Yeah, but it's hard, bro. Like, <laughs> they they the same. You know what I'm saying? That demon shit weird." He's like, "Bro," he's like, "It's good." I was like, "It don't even sound mixed." He's like, "That's why it sounds good." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, hit me." I was like, oh, "You kind of right, cause my shit not all that mixed either, but I think my shit be slapping." You know what I'm saying? When I listen to it, I feel like this is the next level of doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because it really don't sound mixed, but somehow they got it to sound and cohesive enough me, it's to hard to sell. It's hard to sell people that, but like, yeah, I feel bro. like the easy thing to sell is that like the impact. You can see how it impacts people and like yeah, how bro. certain people like me like will come around and be like, nah, this is the punk shit. Like, this is the shit. But, and there's other people that will be like, nah, that ain't shit. But, yeah. but you see those instances of it impacting people where it's almost like I can't deny this I, I don't deny impact but I w- the argument that we make a lot is his level of influence and that him being like well the level of influence like him being is, I like feel a like starting I can't point measure that people like took I think it from I can't him. measure don't it. I don't I don't doubt that he's influenced a lot of folks but he himself has been influenced like that concept well yeah I mean if you listen back to like Everybody's 80s and 90s influence. records like hip hop records like they all 95% of them sound unmixed in my brutal honesty opinion like unless they get remastered yeah. and a lot of them have like you listen to them and you listen to a current record like you're like yeah, yeah. this sounds like shit you know yeah. what I mean like really like but see that's the me- thing is like, me- but, but hold on that's what, I'm, that's what I'm getting at I think that's where music is objective because I feel like I'm one of the people that some of the shit I hear rarely some of it sounds like shit but a lot of it I hear and I'm like I don't feel that way but, but you know why it's interesting though it's because I don't mix shit and I honestly hear shit a different way because I hear you know who says that a lot like the homie Parks and some other podcasts I watch I fucking see like he's always throwing that pain around like nah that's, that mix sounds trash <laughs> that shit sounds trash but it's cause like from a mixer's producer it's like you looking at it on technology standpoint it's like why would I not do something I can fix like, like I can fix this but I think the only thing no, is no, like not necessarily I guess the be- only thing is I'm trying to say is like he didn't invent the wheel no one's arguing that he invented the wheel or, or proposing it as that what they're trying to say is when people bring things that have maybe fallen off or not as been as popular anymore to the mm-hmm. forefront it's groundbreaking that's what I feel well, I agree with, to a certain extent, but what I'm saying is, like, even with the sense of, like, all right, it does, when I say it sounds trash, it sounds trash compared to, like, modern mixes, and, like, as a mix, it's not good, but that doesn't mean that the song isn't good. And okay, that, that means okay. that the song didn't have yeah. an impact and the song didn't have an See? influence. Because there's songs that are super sick that aren't mixed, mixed well in the, in the mix, impact. But, yeah. but, that's, but that's my point with it, is that that's been a thing 
for a while. So it's not that it's kind of a reintroduction. And I think it's a re- re- and that's the thing. I even the just because it's happened before, I don't. I think that now the way he's reissuing it is in a new fashion that's making more of an impact personally. I, and a lot of people, not just him himself. I think a lot of people when they do things that have been done before, you can do it in a way where it's not even that different. But it's because I'm doing it now in this era in this subjects mm-hmm. that it's impactful. And some people feel like, oh, that's nothing. Like you're just doing no, that I'm now. Not, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying I don't think that he was like the standalone, the one that really. Nah, He's not the only one. I don't think that, like, because he's a relatively new artist. Like, would you really say that he's in? Because, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how much (laughs) has he really, like, pushed and influenced, like. But it's because I feel like, but that's the thing is that. Outside of, like, I mean, I guess you can make the argument. I think in Sonics. I think in Sonics, the same way. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's when, as far as me, like, the Mm -hmm. Sonic level of that shit. Because, like, how you're saying, sometimes it don't even got to be, like, really well mixed, but it's profound and it has influence. You know what I'm saying? As long as it hits, it hits. Yeah, it hits. But that's what I'm saying, though. Even on the technological side, they were able to make it mixed and like stable enough to where it can be its own sound and sit on itself. You know what I'm saying? I just, That's what inspires me. I bro. just don't see That's it like quality from the. Uh, I mean, I feel it. You know what Every, I'm saying? Everyone That's gets music. gets hit by you know gets inspired and sees things in different lights. But personally, I just don't see like. I think it's one of those things that like when we get back outside, bro. Never see- I think we're gonna feel we're gonna see a lot of different opinions of when we get back outside, bro. Because I feel like we not. And outside is what I mean is maybe a lot of people don't put a lot of weight on this, but this is what I'm seeing. I start to put a lot of weight on because it affects me that way. It's just even I don't know everybody in the world, but even just knowing whoever I go out and just see in the world and seeing their reactions and just being different places to different shit. I really do look at that as like, damn, this shit goes. This shit's resonating like as far as and I do look at that as impact and change. So say in some degree, like, say, if Playboy Cardi shit is like like that type of sound. I wouldn't think maybe like I wouldn't think that that would be respected. Like some of the shit he was doing, some PC of the music. some of the rock shit he was going on on that. Like I didn't think that it would be respected as the way it was or looked at. Like damn, this is ill. And what I'm seeing is that that's a change for me. When somebody when somebody can use their aesthetic and coolness and all that shit to kind of like make that shit acceptable because the music is dope. Because yeah. it's like oh shit, like damn, the music is dope. And it's like so I can't hate on this. That I, I look at that as a little bit groundbreaking to some degree because you, just because it's done before to some people it's, I, I, I'm saying I just, what this. I'm saying is I like even if you compare it to other artists like like I have like when other we talk artists. about within his own category I don't that are in like that same zone, zone that like, what you what I'm saying is like level of impact because I don't deny oh that, I guess that's for example like Uzi is for example that's where I was gonna go this, with see it. that's a that's a perfect example I think Uzi is made way more mainstream and I think that he's not way more, more groundbreaking at all just he's, he's not groundbreaking well, I feel like he is groundbreaking but he's in a whole different subgenre right now you have mixes of things right so how you're saying he'd be able to bring back punk you know what I'm saying that is kind of a, like yeah. a, a milestone only because like punk's not a thing anymore but now people are labeling this new music which is really like belonging to a whole another category it's not the thing anymore yeah. like it exists it's been going on but, but it ain't the thing but punk is a thing people are now calling now themselves like the thing. punk you know what I'm saying yeah. so that's what he's kind of talking about as far as groundbreaking it's changing like culture norms kind of people are now acknowledging punk and they're trying to that's be getting, punk even though punk music's not really punk music like how you would consider you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but I feel like but some people as feel like as that doesn't Uzi? shift my cultural norms. They're like, yeah, they're like, he's just doing that over well, there. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly. like the Joe argument. You know, it's that's, like, that's what I'm it's saying. like, he's just, and he's that's what I'm saying. It's like, like, I always hate when Joe makes an argument. I, I completely, <laughs> I hate that argument because it's like, it's almost like a, it's almost like a dismissive in a sense to say that like that's not moving shit. When it's like, not in my eyes. When I go look around, it's moving shit. Well, I the, the, the thing shit. is, because I like, I mean, it falls back to like a, a lot of arguments that we have is kind of like the inner and the outer perspective. Like, if you look at it in like a smaller like group of crowd, or whatever it may be, say kids our age or whatever, it's like you're looking at it in the impact. All right, you can see maybe some more movement. I but feel if you like look it on I feel like people scale, are very at, like, quick to make a judgment over what the whole objective. But shit that's is. but if we're talking, and I don't about really inf- think we can gauge that. About influence and impact, people that are that have had major influence and impact impact on a great like it's all about when you're when you're comparing impact and influence. What is this? What is the determining? Factor. It's the Ooh, scale of it. It's see? how much of an impact was it? How like for me sometimes did, it depends. Was it like where? a little? Was it a lot? Right. For me but sometimes it depends where. Like if it's in it, the youth. If it it's do- in the youth, I, I put a lot more impactful because that's what's going to turn to the future. See, the th- whilst I can say that to an extent, well, I see that to an extent. Like my it, cousins and them listen to 
but it varies you know to saying? how much even within that youth what i'm saying is like even within that youth i don't think that cardi was the one that he was necessarily ushering in something so new like i don't think that he was the one that made people like open their eyes like yo we can this is not punk, new or brought it back i think he i think he brought it back like, for sure and he brought it back I, to be cool i'm not to say that he hasn't helped like push the movement but i don't think he's the one that we should be looking at as like the grandfather of the movement i think he or made it right. cool as fuck he yeah. didn't he didn't start it yeah but he made it he made it back cool it's the aesthetic and i'm not even saying like i don't like cardi's music like completely like yeah we're just talking about I fuck with and i love like there's songs that i will slap without a doubt fuck like yeah. on my own time there's songs that you know if they're at a party like they're the shit to you know mm. there's certain times where like on a listening to Cardi on my own thing, I'm like, eh, see, that's the weird thing about it. It's like with the punk shit, it's like I get the opposite regard. Like I feel like a lot of people are resonating with the themes and shit he's embracing. Like me, on the personal level of the shit he's talking about, because because it's like lifestyle and shifting cultural norms. Like you know but what I'm saying? Been, like, like but, but hold on, like let me explain it a little better. Like lifestyle and shifting cultural norms in a sense of like you made the parallel between like, yeah, I'm vibing with this shit when I'm outside, but when it's in the personal, it doesn't connect as much. Like when you're just you alone, right? No, I'm saying like there's what I was trying to get at is that there's certain songs that I do fuck with, don't get me wrong. So it's not that no, I completely I'm saying hate like, Cardi, but I'm saying that I don't see it like not the better so I can acknowledge his impact is like, and his influence, but I can't acknowledge him as being like much more than like well, I know you were saying there's certain songs you fuck with and there's certain like songs you don't. But the way forward. you painted it, I know there's certain songs you fuck with and certain songs you don't. But the way you painted it was like the songs, like a lot of the songs you fuck with are like it's a lot of fun. Like you said, like, it's a lot of fun. It's this shit, but you said when I'm alone bumping it, it's cer- different. So all I'm Sometimes. trying to say is that like the shit that for me, his last album, the shit it had a switch within that for me where some of this shit slapped outside but i actually felt the opposite i felt most of that shit did not slap outside most of the album is garbage it was not like the songs that aren't garbage and then it wasn't really shit that i could be bumping like out with people where they would be like in the vibe like oh damn like this was it it. you know what i'm saying but which is surprising for his other shit like his other shit was shit you could play at parties and shit like that i want to be straight up bro i didn't feel like this album i could bump at parties at all Mm. I, I want no nah, never. That's what I'm saying. It didn't sound like that at all to me. I was like, I could slap this with the homies, hey, like, and be turning up. You might be able to if you listen to it longer than the ones that really do stand out as like artistic. Like I was saying, those would be the ones you play, right? Like for example, if it, for me, I felt like Rockstar made and Stop Breathing, and even Go to the Moon. I have Kanye. to work out to those, bro. But that's what I'm saying. I can only though. like run to those songs. I feel mm. like that's what can... I. That's what I mean. He's bringing that that shit, but that's not. I guess that's where I can agree with you. That's not new. So so Pete mm. though, there's mad shit like that. It's not that it's not new bro it's just the way that it sounds though is different you know what i'm saying and it's the it's popping right now because there's not of, really no one from the ghetto doing that well i mean i don't, I don't like, I'm like making speak. that music like i'm just saying like from him yeah, playboy yeah, yeah, cardi yeah. like look at the genre he's in the shit he be talking about he be talking about like his brother died his shot like that's that's the my di- brother died. that's the yeah. thing <laughs> he be talking about like there's no one on that realm hitting the punk shit yeah yeah most definitely you right I'll you know what i'm that. saying yeah like, that's what i'm trying to say yeah. like and that's what i think he's he's bending those type of cultures and i mm-hmm. think some people see that as very minimal a lot of people was like well what is that that's that's this but i see that as like i see that as becoming this because that's what culture is right now like unfortunately like violence bro and like and like gang culture and like all that shit is like and hip hop is like the epicenter of music right now. Yeah, I wasn't gonna lie. Uh, as I was listening to that, the whole lot of red really started hit me. I'm like, there's gonna be a whole lot of red to this shit. No cap. That that tape is real like aggressive. I wouldn't say like just aggressive. It's just like the vibe, especially because it's like sonically it's hard. Scary. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. It's a little scary. Like if you're like a kid or something, like come listen to this. That. Yeah, you can't really like take that I was, as a kid. And I think he bringing that back. Like he bringing it back where your mom had to be like, you can't bump this. But bro, like, and I fuck and I fuck with, and you know I fuck with that because that, that's a large part of like what clipping is, or like even uh, mm. JPEG, like it's or death grips. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that you probably wouldn't play in front of your mom, or like stuff that's on. Those are like those are my examples of. Uh, that's why I actually that's a great example of like why I don't think he's changed anything because those two groups I were fucking with and I think Ooh. they push those boundaries more so than he does and they've been doing yeah. it longer I than he is. But here's but the I got a, I got a spitball but, card but, for you. But, but, but they're but not he, mainstream though. But that's what, that's what so that's what makes say. it groundbreaking. That's what let me finish, okay. bro. That's what <laughs> going with is that they haven't had that impact of influence. But my point being is that he's not changing anything. Don't get me wrong. Like I think by making that decision, it's a change. By making the being no, a mainstream artist and making that decision, you're changing the game. Kids are listening to this shit. 
this is where I kept going with it, is that he, I'm not denying that he's someone who pushed the movement forward, mm. but he's not someone who I think has changed the movement. Like, Ooh. I don't see... I, I think don't, you're painting the I don't perfect exact way he can. Pivot you the, helping he me, didn't, bro. He didn't pivot any movements. He just made this movement go further better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, did, I dig he that, did, he but didn't I think... He didn't put a fork in the road and say, like, no, now it's going to be crazy right. this or crazy that. Like, I dig that, but the perfect example... He just saw this lane and he went down it, and people were like, yo, that's cool. Let's follow that guy. And he pushed that forward. Bro, but you think... Don't you think by being so mainstream and being so broad more people are gonna do that for him that's what i'm trying to say is like it's like i think that i think the groundbreaking thing in it is like well that's a different um pierre born's better but yeah that's a different argument i think the groundbreaking thing that you painted i think you painted exactly the perfect movement in that that made me see what was the groundbreaking thing he did it was being a mainstream artist and making that one decision to be like i think that's groundbreaking because he don't have to do that when you're somebody that people always fuck with it's like you could just like you have all the reason to not make that move, and I what well, all I'm saying is that like man I went full in. I think I think groundbreaking is that like like the fact that he was on that pedestal and he chose to make that decision. I think that's what's groundbreaking because that's set standards. That's set standards. When somebody is a fucking a mainstream act on some like crazy shit and they say nah, I'm gonna go fuck with the clip and shit. I'm not saying he did that, but I'm just throwing that as an example, just to say that that's groundbreaking. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not making a parallel. That he he did that far into it because they did take it further artistically. They took, they did more for that artistically than he did. But when somebody is that mainstream and they make that choice because of the the audience they have, the impact in my opinion is a lot greater because they're on the pedestal making that choice. If you make that choice in private, you made that choice in private. But what I'm saying is that he just doesn't, he's not doing anything new. But the, I mean, yeah, like but I'm not trying to change, argue that though. Now you're bringing it mind. back to like a broad stance yeah, though. But, but I was going back. Keep it. But like, nah, but I'm saying like with the way you just had it, the way you just explained it right there where you said the only thing he did was because you remember when I jumped yeah, in front even, of you but even in that sense alright so that whole mainstream saying, point is so, where I'm keeping it alright so his <laughs> big thing saying. was alright so let's say his big thing was his change of mindset from doing whatever it was let's, what would you classify it prior to that whatever. no what I'm saying what is would you, what would you, nah, what it's would not you what classify as the pre and the post that's was not, it pre was it pop and then he went nah, to punk I'm not making that change I can like, explain that change what I'm trying to I'm not making the change of what he made I'm saying that being in this position as a mainstream act making the decision to put your your foot into this genre and make an album of that genre that's what i'm saying not going not the fact of what you went to from this so the, no other i'm talking about the point I'm, hey, but, I, but what i will say is not to that it, degree not, not with no. that much impact not with that much impact not to I mean, that maybe degree not to a straight punk but like to a switch of genre and then have like a large impact. well i'm talking about in punk i'm talking about in straight punk like, no i don't know no no travel no trap or no like like drake fool that was just like i'm about to go make this punk album when does but that happen? No, when does that, that happen? But even then, would you classify a Cardi? Yeah, I classify like, that uh, as Drake like, level that he went to go not, do a punk album. Yeah. Close to Drake, not 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 superstar Drake, but mainstream as Drake. You get what I'm saying? Like he's in that realm of like kids look at him and shit like that. Now I'm saying he's done as much as Drake. I'm saying that I don't put Cardi in the little boy range no more because of his genre of music. Naturally, when you're in that mainstream genre of music and you like kids fucking and shit like that, mm -hmm. even if your music is mediocre, he's, you're, not, you're, little, he's not in the little. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, like the, even I could put his music there. I don't have no mm -hmm. problem saying his music is in that range. But as an artist and what people look at him as just as like mainstream wise he's known you know what i'm saying he's known big like yeah. that that's what i mean because i was like i'm not trying to argue his music is fucking near drake don't let me don't catch me saying that <laughs> but then like if playboy Cardi does a feature with drake which he did on his newest tape it was like groundbreaking you know what i'm saying like people that's were what like, i mean oh drake and playboy cardi made a song together and it's the only one they've ever done together and it's like this thing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like pain 1993 whatever it's called like that, that shit goes. was a that shit was an internet song for bro, before the album came out. That shit the song had even zillions came out. of views, and it was like growing up, bro. Like everybody's playing that stuff. You know what I'm talking about? We not gonna play Cardi at the party or whatever. So you, you that's one of them songs you gonna play at the party, bro. So like, do you they're think, gonna play that song. Do you think they're playing it at the party for Cardi or for Drake? For both. Both, bro. That one no because cap. it was not Drake sound at all on that song. Hell he no. he didn't even come in. To the song he didn't even come in on his personal like Drake swag. Like he didn't even come in on his. I'm gonna take over the song. Pretty sure that's actually probably the one. Let me where's my phone. Drake did his thing, but I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. But that song, but that was gonna say I didn't want to correct you, bro. But that song actually ended up not on the album. Which one? Nineteen Pain Nineteen? No, they actually never made it off of that. It, it was a leak before, but because it was a leak, it never made it on the actual album. Pain? 19? Yeah, it's 19? not on there. Yes, it did. I swear, bro. That shit, man. Because I would be slapping oh. that shit if there was a public Cardi Drake song on my socials and on my, like, it's not, it's Niggas, not, on, but respect. it's been on YouTube for, like, months before it, it came out. it supposed to be on a whole lot of red? Give a fuck, It buddy. leaked, that's why. It leaked. But it's, yeah, it's right on, my jeans. It leaked before, <laughs> so you couldn't put it on it type shit. All right, off the top, I'll tell you the three songs on that album. Oh, it was on the Drake album. With. That's what I was like. It was Go to the oh, Moon, 
shit, uh, it was on the Drake control album. Control and, and That shit did come out. It was on uh, dark, the dark lane demo tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. We're actually All right, damn jeans. it. Never mind. Even though that's not that's not punk, I think Drake got us with the dark lane demo tapes. He did it. That shit was gas. He did make a dark lane demo tapes. He called it dark lane. Like, I'm going to the dark lane. <laughs> I will say one thing, though, just to go back, because I'm kind of like trying to, you know, keep it on. But. Yeah. You saying um you know what was like the pre and the post like after Playboy Cardi made that transition mm-hmm. and I would argue PC music like straight up because of what he how big he is and what he's doing with punk and how he's doing it it's changing music for the underground you know what I'm saying that's where the real ground break, if you want to talk about ground breaking breaking I really think it's on that level that's another reason why I think Pierre's so good you know what I'm saying it's because that stuff there's so many other people now who are gonna take that punk element and try to make it into their own sound. And do it. It's the same way how, like, when people, uh, when Magnolia came out and Cardi first came out, like, the whole SoundCloud wave, and then you had everybody sounding like SoundCloud artists, quote-unquote, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was the wave. That was the real groundbreaking stuff. These artists coming in, changing the sound, and then emulators trying to use it and make something else. So the people like, people who are currently doing that right now, like, um, I was bringing this up, too, you talk about pop, like, hyper pop, Lil Uzi, you know what I'm saying? But hyper pop is its own thing over... And in Europe as I well. I would completely separate that from yeah. punk and emo and everything because like it's Charlie, like some whole different shit. Charlie XCX, all of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand, like, Playboy Cardi is also international. Like, they play him other where, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. in Russia and London, Bro, all that. You got to give me the background on PC music. Point, you got to give yeah. me the background on PC music. And when you, I want you to also so, talk about the Charlie XCX shit because I know that Little Uzi sampled them or some crazy shit. Yeah, because Charlie's the shit. Hey, look, <laughs> let me keep it a hundo, okay? I don't really like pop music like that. But I respect it because I like music. You feel me? So, like, your early pop stars, you know what I'm saying? Your Katy Perry's, your Britney Spears, you know what I'm saying? Like, your Demi Lovato's even, all them people, Iggy Azalea. Like, I, I think she's pop. All them, bro, I promise you they sound like or have been outdone by Charlie XCX. And she's based in London, you know what I'm saying? Away from America, like, in a whole different scene, but really making, like, pop music that's just changing the game. And they kind of, you know, label her kind of like the the forefather or the foremother, whatever the fuck you want to call it, of PC <laughs> music. Mm. But I feel like it spreads here too. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have little Uzis, bro. You know what I'm saying? The people who send them the loops. What's the PC stand for? So PC... Is it the politically correct or is it like PC in what other way? I ain't gonna lie. That's good because a lot of those people are people with like, you know, a liberal uh, image attached to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they're very pro, you know, LGBTQ and things like that. Especially mm-hmm. like, you know, Lil Uzi, he's kind of blending the lines a little bit. Playboy Cardi's blending the lines. Uh, Charlie XCX, you know, she's got a fan base hmm. there predominantly. That's, that's like, an interesting parallel you know, I never thought about. We but I'm pretty sure about, it stands for PC like yeah, it PC. Is like, it is like PC, but mm-hmm. I just like how, you know, you brought that up. Yeah, that's, that's another crazy. way to look at it. You know what I'm <laughs> okay. saying? But um, wait, wait. Even, so what? What? What do you mean by PC music? Just music you get off. So no, PC music. It's is a like, whole genre. It's, it's a thing. genre, you and there's, it. there's sub genres within it. So you got like digicore, which is like you ever heard of a hundred gex? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like that type of music, like that real glitchy, like ugh, okay type of music. That's the whole thing. The digicore, you know what I'm saying? It's also like that e girl vibe. I don't pay too much attention to that because I think it's weird to me. But like on TikTok, you know what I'm saying? Like the e girl thing that's going on is blowing up. A lot of that music comes from that PC. I don't have TikTok. It, nah, my girl got TikTok. Bro, but PC music is big within yeah, that. Yeah, it's like it's like meme music, but they're they're yeah. they're, they're using it differently. That's a good way to is say it. Like just like like, J, like but Japanese it's, pop, like J-pop, so like look, K-pop, they're making like, it. People basically, bro, in the world, is people, it just like a sub in the world genre of that? Like what in the world, people are forgetting the old shit that things came from, and they're they're re- creating new things, but they're based on old shit, and then they're and they're 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 now referenced in society as what they are now. So let me that's, go ahead. That's my whole point. And as I'm saying, like, so you guys got rock with that that's what's going on now I don't, I don't doubt like the rebranding team but, <laughs> but it's like fine. so it's, it's almost like we like, don't even need to throw that shit in the conversation though because i feel like it's counterproductive to what is to establishing the new the new subgenres that are going on now because i understand it no wrong understand like i understand like, i, under, understand I get it, it. I get that's it, yeah. what i asked is it a subgenre and a so of what like like where a lot of people lie? don't a lot of people try to make it is i think a lot of people within those things are trying to make those things their own so they purposely do not like necessarily make direct connections to what shit came from but it did came from Cause shit because I'm, I'm I only asked so it because like, like all those artists that you li- yeah, yeah. that you listed are artists that I've listened to like mm-hmm. listened to multiple songs of so I can say that they lie within a range but I wouldn't 
if I were to like think of like classifying those artists, I would have never at once put them all into a separate genre of themselves. If I'm saying, it's been done if for I'm speaking them, honestly, but like blogs and things like that. So like you know, there's Rico influencers Nasty? that are changing shit. Bro. No, don't get me wrong. And the thing is, when I see, because I get it, because when I post, when we're posting stuff and we have to go through this fucking authenticate, like what is genre thing? Like I've seen all these goddamn subgenres, and I'm seeing, I'm like, they're taking it to a whole nother level of like <laughs> really breaking it down, like what is what. But that's what I'm asking, like if this is the case of this is a subgenre, like what is it derived from? You know, bro. I don't know. Yeah, because so, I don't see some like if it's gonna be that broad, like what is it? So PC music is a that's what I'm saying. That's why I feel like it's so unique because it really comes from everything, bro. Like we're talking about punk music and PC music in the same sentence, and that's because the producer who makes Playboy Cardi stuff is literally like the direct producer for like all these other people who make these bigger name PC type music. You know what I'm saying? Like Rico Nasty, right? I don't know if you know who Rico Nasty is. I know her. Rico Nasty and Playboy Cardi kind of have that same Wah! scream kind of like yell and stuff, but they get their beats from the same types of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Loop makers. You got to understand the industry as well. Like music comes from loop makers yeah. nowadays. You know what I'm saying? People who make the melodies, make the sound, mm-hmm. sell them to producers or give them to producers. And there's a lot of collaboration going on with the music. You see what I'm saying? So everything's blending, bro. So all these people who I'm mentioning are kind of like within the same realm but have the same producers the same type of beat the same culture is being developed within this right here so who would you say so is Charlie XEX's influences like if she's someone like the godfather so, like who who is she like people say she was bumping well, that got her to fourth for a church see, that's what I'm saying I feel like that's why she's such like an anomaly because she'll tell you she gets all her inspirations from I love old, that you use that word bro because yeah. I use that word a lot and it's like my favorite word it's an anomaly bro <laughs> because I get it it's like motherfuckers always want to tie you to be like you ain't a fucking anomaly you an no, amalgamation bro. of all this other shit but people as artists are sensitive to say and I love it like they love calling themselves so, an anomaly and I understand it because she's like yeah I was influenced by this shit but it's like I kind of made this shit on my own yeah mm-hmm. I, was, I will say there's nothing new under the sun but something can be made new again you know what I'm saying so like it. it can be it can appear new again or it can be remixed like you can make chicken 10 times but it's not gonna taste the same every time unless you decide that you wanna make a formula for it you know what I'm saying but you might overcook it the third time you know what I'm saying you might add some different types of seasoning the third or the fourth time you know, barbecue this time. You know what I'm and saying? And it could become a style. It could become like a style. Like o- overcooking, it could be like, oh now shit, it's, it's this o- is now a genre. It's overcooked honey. Uh, <laughs> this is overcooked yeah, chicken mustard. Mark, you know what I'm saying? Without like, a doubt. That's fucking yeah. trippy. No, I, I agree so, with all that, but what was her? So what was what her saying. change? Her, for her, uh, you know, what she states is like, um, she had early influences from like just regular pop. So like, you know, your salt and pepper, your uh, Britney Spears, you know what I'm saying? Your um, Madonnas, right? Like some of the older, like pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your traditional pop. Now she took all that stuff, like that early stuff, like even like Boys to Men or like uh, what's the other boy band? Backstreet uh, Boys. You know what I'm saying? NSYNC. Backstreet and Sync. You know what I'm saying? She liked that mm-hmm. stuff. But now that she's a little older, like the time she grew up in, how we talking about LimeWire, MySpace, all that. Her friends are listening to like Lil Wayne too. You know what I'm saying? Or they might listen to like Biggie or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So she has a blend of musics. So what she does, she takes the core concepts of each one and adds it to her own style in a manner that she can. You know what I'm saying? I feel with oh, her producer. I feel with that, is that like K-pop? No, it's not like K-pop. Bro. Well, it's, no, but- it's like K-pop, but it's not K-pop because it's not being made in that location and that type of sphere. You know what I'm saying? But it's with that mindset of like Basically. taking all the like fire shits of everything. And, and that's like- why it's called PC music. It's an, a, a, a combination. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying Play With Cardi to me is kind of changing the game only because he's adding to that. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like him and like his style he's just and a how part he's coming of it. And that goes to what you were saying. It's like he could be a part of it. He may not be like the main guy, but like he's just just from being a part of it is an important thing right now. There's so many the like us being a part of a lot of shit we're a part of is important. The way the way I'm looking at at this is if if PC music is supposed to be just this blend, so it's just basically f- like mm-hmm. overall fusion. And like if that's the case, like I fuck with the idea of it, but I don't see it like being anything that's I'm not I'm beside not even talking about Charlie XX at this point, but like the PC music thing, like I guess, what well, that's probably what you would classify our stuff then, because all all our stuff is on a bunch of different ranges and then a bunch of different like, it's a bunch of mixes of here and like stuff that's here, stuff that's there. Go I would through. definitely see like we have some songs of PC music, but the thing is, it's like because I'm trying almost to a, like I guess the I'm best way I could do it like, is what, sonically. Like, is it like the best way I can pinpoint it, it, like it without a specific ex- fusion that goes into this, like all the stuff that lies within oh, this is PC you, music? Like, where does I think it? I can help you, bro. There's one song that's like where I can't say it verbally on like the exactly what this is, but there's a sonically song that I remember that's like, oh, this is PC music for sure. There's this weird song I made where it was like kind of like a humming song where it was like, or no, the one when Yacella was here, and I was like, you know how you made that shit and you sped up my voice. 
and it was like a pop song and I was like and it was like fast forwarded like we fast forwarded the beat to be like on some like like we put in a microwave or yeah. like, that's something that that's kind of what PC music yeah. shit it's like where you're using like where you and it is like our shit where it's like you're using all the PC effects to make it fucking like microwaved in a way but it's not trash because you're not making it like pop music how yeah. old pop music used to be I don't so yeah we are we do kind of move I don't like that. having to use like with that I'd say like I'd put Kanye low key over Charlie if that's the case of like well, if we're fused. I could about say like I would feel like she like, hella influenced him though. I'll, I'll be honest. I feel like it goes hand in hand because I feel yeah. like you know Kanye definitely gotten influences from his label mates and his label mm. mates might have Kanye influences is from fucking him. Influence God. He's got. Oh no, don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> and he, and he, I forget about and that. And he puts it on like he'll put everybody on that like put him on he. And I and I agree with him in the sense that like any and everything influences you. We've had this conversation. Yeah, before. he's like, like the homie that walked in, gave me a water. He's like exactly <laughs> like everything influences you to a certain extent, whether it be small or large. You know what I mean? But like even within that though, like we're talking about like influence from impact of the artist and what they did. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like what that people took sense. away from that. that. Like so even regardless of same thing with Charlie because we're saying I'm assuming she has like she said she's been influenced by these artists from the past and I'm assuming she's got you know uh, whether it be label mates or then like people that are helping her around there like bounce off ideas but their impact on like what they're changed like that's what we're talking about right the people that are so called the these positions of I don't know grandfathers of uh, you know whatever maybe like the when change. there wasn't many people doing it the homies that were doing it then you know what I mean like yeah. I feel so like I'm kind of nice. curious to get like I feel like it'd be nice to hear some of it. it cause I feel like a lot of it is kind of just like uh talking you know what I'm saying like when you hear it, I feel like you can clearly identify like the tropes or like the identifiers that make it like PC mm. music you know what I'm saying uh, one song what would you say um just as far as PC music yeah. do you know what Ken Carson is no but let's play it High, Highest Shit by Ken Carson I feel like that's the perfect example Of that Sounds producer dope. His <laughs> name is Starboy Okay He's a loot maker from Denmark Or based out of Denmark And he owns a label called Hyper Pop So he's ah. literally like The manufacturer of this, this Hyper Pop sound Nah Ken Carson Oh Ken Carson He signed to play with Cardi actually well, That's where they get their sound what from What the fuck Yeah That's crazy out He of signed town. to play with Cardi And he has a label called Hyper Pop where he basically puts out all of this shit, like loops, essentially. Well, no, that's uh, Starboy, the producer. Oh, Starboy is, Yeah, my bad. the producer, his label is Hyper Pop. But he produced this beat for Ken Carson. Yes. Okay. He's the, like, loop maker that makes all these beats. So within this, we're talking about the beats. Oh, dude, and so so Pierre is, is PC music. Basically. I love Pierre. And that makes sense. You know why I love Pierre? is because I felt like his shit resonated with our shit. Mm-hmm. Like, the shit mm-hmm. he was doing, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, he's doing what we're doing. He's making a world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is like our shit. This song is just like a, a single, I guess. Mm-hmm. Rolled off his tape. But the Sonics. The Sonics already is like very like, blink, you know, like, mm-hmm. blink, blink, blink. <laughs> I feel like I'm like on a game. <laughs> if I took out his voice. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he adds his voice to kind of go with it, to be like, oh, I'm going to make my voice like. <laughs> so. The way that the beat sounds, it sounds unmixed. Like the saw that he uses, it like doesn't sound like. I feel yeah, I can hear the glitchiness. It's it. Glitchy, it sounds a little bit glitchy. It's very poppy. It's very like PC like. It's very obvious. It was made, you know, on somebody's computer or laptop. Like someone threw my computer on the very floor. It would, start, it would start bleeding. So that's the sound. So everybody's <laughs> going that route within their respective ways. Like Playboy Cardi's new album sounds like this, but it sounds like a punk version of this. You see what I'm saying? That's why I feel like it belongs within that category. Hmm. People would attach him to that category. That's not me, you know what I'm saying? I can say whatever I want, but that's opinion. I go by what's you based just, off But of, that's cool, though. You bring you know, in some shit out. that you've observed within the culture. Like a but trend you've like, seen within the culture. But I feel like the trend is bigger than what we are currently acknowledging. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what I try that's to say, I like to but I about. feel like it's also because of my, like, what I choose to view and take in right now. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I limit mm-hmm. all the shit I want to see and, like, thinking, so it's like, I don't know what's popping. That is true. That is true. It's same same here. Like I don't, you know, we're only subject to whatever we is being put across our phone, our algorithms, our, and especially now where you can't go out and shit. Like it's, it's like I hike. You don't know what the fuck is popping in Denmark. Like I don't know what these fools are bumping in in like the UK and shit. Like mm-hmm. in school, I kind of did. <laughs> I kind of was like renting cars and fools, and I would hear shit that I didn't even know. Like a lot mm-hmm. of prog music. I know people bump prog like that. Prog. Yeah, it's like, like another the genre. Location it's kinda, or like. 
Um, oh, it's I, a genre. I think prog metal and stuff like that. I think that might be a location, but also oh, pro- like pro- progressive. But it's almost like somewhat like that. But it also sometimes it'd be like motherfuckers singing like opera, but it feels like alternative opera. Alternative opera. Mind Tree Radio. But this was a really good. This is a really good conversation. I. It was honestly really interesting, like listening to you guys' perspective on, on Cardi, because I mean, Wesley and I have had this conversation a million over times. Yeah, that's, I feel that's like. why I get passionate. <laughs> we we honestly don't give too much of a fuck about it. We just have this argument like one million times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like easy to have. <laughs> yeah. In a nutshell, bro, we got this shit's hard. I feel like that's what I chalk it up to. I feel like he's a good artist. He's solid. But I feel like there's just so much going around to play with Cardi that's just kind of hard to fuck with. No, much love and respect. Honest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like it's hard to fuck with that shit. Do but you fuck you with any to- like? I guess that's another thing because I know you're big on hip hop and like shit like that. And now, now I know you're big on rock. Do you fuck with any like R and B and like soul shit like that? So, like. My I'm girl, big on that type of shit. My girl makes fun of me all the time because I don't really listen to R&B. I actually think Pierre Bourne is R&B. I realized that about yeah, you. Yeah. I was like, I noticed that there's not that many of those archetypes within you. Nah, bro. Like that because, shit is not like your vibe at all. Because I feel like like regular R&B, like your, I like some like okay, if you want to like be honest, like R&B to me, like Craig David. I don't know if you know what that is. It's I like, do know who that is. Like I would feel like that's contemporary R and B. But that's the only like That's like R- adult contemporary, like when your mom will listen to the radio, like ninety three point four the wave. Yeah. That's like that shit. To me though, I'm like <laughs> okay, that's okay. some of the hardest music to make, especially in this type of time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's very relaxed, chill, you can play anywhere, you know what I'm saying? Like but it's smooth, it's rhythmic, it's real like proper real. music, I would say. That's what I would put on it, like the tag. So to me, R and B nowadays is cool and I fuck with most of it. But I can't have like I don't like that on my mental. That makes sense though. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it's like it is heavy. Like I, and, yeah. and the thing is, is like I'm a heavy dude. <laughs> so yeah. like I realize I listen to a lot of R and B. Like and I, I and I kind of dis have a distaste for like light R and B. Like I can like fun shit when it's like a party vibe. But say like Bryson Tiller's album, I didn't like Bryson Tiller's last album. And a yeah, lot of people, a it. lot of people love that album. But it's because it's like. My boy's married. Like, there's yeah. a kid and shit. It's like, that's not my vibe. Like, I don't want to hear you sing about that shit about how much you're in love. Like, I didn't like the Chance album. Like, you know, I'm cool with mm. that, bro. That's what you you sing about your love. Like, Pierre, I feel like I grew up. Love, I like, grew up on R and B where it was like my heart was fucking broken. I'm about to make a fucking song. Or, you know? or it was like. I'm, it was oh, there's some lovey dovey shit where it was like you know a good ass day outside I'm in a vibe I'm doing like that's not I'm not hate on that but I realize like emotion and shit really gets me in songs and people with vulnerability and in R&B I find a lot of vulnerability I guess that's what it is I find a lot of vulnerable moments so I, I appreciate that okay. see another reason why I feel like I don't really mess with like R&B because like I guess you know my, my idea of R&B is kind of been skewed you know like, I would even, you know who Saw Baby is? I would consider Saw Baby to me R&B. Just because. <laughs> what you say? Like, <laughs> like, R&B to you is like some auto-tuned out singing. Sing, yeah, <laughs> it's been changed, you know? And if the only R&B that I can identify as R&B is like your very contemporary stuff. Like, uh, Boot Up, that's a good R&B song, you know? I like that. I that was, very, they, they do the very prominent sample yeah. that like hit the old veins and shit. You people. know, mm-hmm. it's smooth. It's very nice. It's do playable. you like Brent at all? Brent, uh, Fias. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been introduced to him. I like some of the stuff. I definitely see it. Like as far as like artistic, it's next level. Like bro, is really nice. He's really good. He's another person that I would kind of say is like good with like knowing how to produce really good quality music. I His think that's some quality. shit I want to do with it's like. Good. I like fools that are like he's. I feel like he's blending it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He's taking elements of R and B, but he's like I'm also take elements of all the other shit yeah. I fuck with because mm-hmm. I know that's how people digest shit nowadays. Yep. Yeah. Like they don't just digest it like one thing at a time. Like they want it all the whole package. Yeah. I like the whole package. I don't want just the you know. Yeah, so I, that's, I that's what I'm looking that. for. If I'm looking for this specific thing, I'll take it. But if not, you gotta give me something new, refreshing. I like a lot of music is definitely like kind of just it's one and done, you know. That's true. It's Very sad, but it's true. Yeah. I wish I could sing though. You <laughs> I can. can. I can. You I can. can. I'm learning how to like you, better and did shit. You go through with the classes? Are you? I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm gonna work on classes? that. I'm gonna try to get some singing lessons. Oh, I think okay. like for my birthday, I was like, yo, that's a, a like a like I, I might talk about that. I guess in the life information shit because that is something that did maybe it was like it was a few weeks ago, but I did have a life information about that where I was like for real. I, I I took piano lessons like this fool when I was young and like stopped at like fourth grade or some shit and I just didn't do it no more and I always kind of regretted it because my pops was always the same way he was like bro like you should have stayed with it I took guitar lessons I didn't finish like it was a vibe and he always tells me shit like that like yo you should take acting lessons you should take fucking like singing lessons or just like some shit like that 
and that at one point i was making music in the stew and shit like that and it really just resonated me like bro like that's what took drake and shit to the next level like once he got to his shit of like knowing how to craft the song and have the personality and have the marketing he was like let me just up my singing and he did and then it fucking went off and i was like i just need to do that shit i need to like take the time like he's had to learn some shit like fucking sit down to class for some weeks and then just come back with the skill and then you're gone so it's like I, i'm gonna make that move it was just a bit expensive like my mom looked it up and she hit me with the it's about a fucking 70 something per class or like uh, it was like you know what i'm saying like plus per class and i was like damn yeah. i'm gonna have to get a job that part <laughs> 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 well, that's up though yeah but I mean, i'm down though I feel like it'd be cool Even if you did like Say One or two sessions With just like someone That's like really A nice teacher Or something like that I mean you could probably take, Learn a lot And you know what I mean That just is true huh? going, like, going Maybe taking the approach That you were saying Like going into it And just seeing what you get on Even if you don't go All the way throughout yeah, You, you might get a lot From the first two That's facts but You can learn so much bro Like cause they cover Most of the basics And stuff like that Usually like in the intro And then you'll get into The deeper like More advanced stuff Which you can learn a lot from And will take you to the next Like expert level but that is also stuff that you can get across kind of with practice and just like what and they and with focus of knowing what you want to do I guess like look at it now like I know a lot of where the areas I want to work on and shit yeah so if you have a teacher that's nice nice and they can point you in the right direction of like okay this is what you want to focus on let's hit these like you know let's do these drills real quick and then you'll know like oh, okay shit like I'll just go do these drills on my own time like I don't got to do it in front of her or him like you know mm, what I mean like you're right you're right that's, that's some shit I should look into like I, I didn't think about it as deep as that like you can get the tools to take with you in life because that's what most dope teachers are anyways they're gonna tell you like yo bro like this is all fine and all but like this is some shit you could use every day to up your voice yeah yeah you know Shit, bro. All right, well, fuck it. Let's get into the life affirmations. Yeah. All right, all right. <sighs> I, I did mine. I'll show it to you then. All right. Um, for me, honestly, something that I've been giving a lot more thought to and a lot more consideration to these past uh, this past week is uh, collectibles, NFTs to be specific. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. I know I've talked to you about it a little bit last time we, we were hanging out, but it's called non non fungible tokens. Is basically the future of like collectibles. It runs on like the blockchain server, which is like the same thing as like Bitcoin and Ethereum, cryptocurrency in general. But the way it works is that because it's on that server where everyone can kind of identify and see what transactions are being made, you can confirm who the owner is of a certain asset. So you can, whether it be like a picture or there's like honestly the uses for it are becoming insane like there's more and stuff more and more stuff people are using it for um and it's really interesting to see how it works but a large part of it right now is in the collectibles area so people are making like um collectible art you know think of in the same way like when um the mona lisa or like uh other fine art the high levels of art where people are like spending millions of dollars on creating on getting these pieces because they were made by the creator right on like say they want to get a Picasso or like a you know who's someone else like that's why am I blanking on names you know like Bob Ross <laughs> like Bob you know Ross. what I mean they want to get they want to <laughs> get an Bob original Ross. of somebody right yeah how do you know it's an original in a physical form it's damn near impossible you have to bring in an expert who knows their shit and has been like studying this thing maybe does like a side by side comparison of old autographs you know and then on top of that they have to try to date it and make sure that you know, there's no shenanigans like there's a whole lot of um, area for like gray area in proving that something is legit and the original piece right but with this new form of technology there's only one way of confirming it you just have to see who the owner is and you can tr and it'll show you the exact lineage of who purchased and who sold this exact asset so you can know if something is real or fake essentially and it's something that's been like that was a, that was a really perfectly <laughs> tied one um but those like that aspect is something that i was because i never like i've always been interested in like the art field like just something that's like oh it's an interesting sector like industry that people are like they get into you see like when you see movies and stuff like that or like people or you go into like really nice houses and stuff like that you see people have like these really large art pieces and some people use it as like investments assets they're buying like fifty thousand five hundred thousand million dollar pieces that they're using to then resell later and it works the same way because you can sell the you collect these items and then you resell them but it's I, i'm just fascinated by the fact that it's the future because one it's a way of authentifying authenticating like who the original owner is yeah and on top of that you can 
create like royalty payments so that if every time it's moved like the original owner gets paid for that like every time it gets moved so it's always oh, it allows nice. artists to yeah you know it's like the new wave on verifying collectibles and shit exactly as far as you kind of been telling me that like it's going to become one of the most official ways to verify just all trading of shit like, no, i'm yeah. excited and That's i hope crazy. and like i hope yeah. the fans are excited because there's definitely going to be like a lot of vine tree uh nfts coming very soon oh that's really dope like i've been i've been working on that and <laughs> we're, we're trying to get in on that space yeah hell yeah okay. But that's yeah, really that's, that's something that's changed my mind recently. I think that's a game changer, bro. Thank you. Yeah, that's smooth. So what about you, bro? What, what affirmations you were having? Uh, I know you a little bit were talking about merch, at least before that. Um, I feel like that's interesting. Yeah, so I'm not really like a, a ginormous clothes person, but I appreciate clothes, man. Like I do, you know, like even when we were talking in the car, just about like, uh, you know, clothes is like an art. I really do think clothes is like an art. And like clothes is also a piece of you, you know, it's like very functional. For me, for me like it's cold as hell right now, you know what I'm saying? But I, I would rather have this sweater than, like, another sweater. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my shit. So I feel like I like making those. But, you know, if I could produce that for, like, people, you know what I'm saying, with just something on it to, like, rock out, you know what I'm saying? That's cool, too. Like, I don't really like doing the extras for the fashion, but I do like fashion, you know what I'm saying? I'm just not willing to spend, like, 3000 on this jacket just because he's easy on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like a, a nice little $25, you know, champion sweater or something look good, and that's why it came back, you know what I'm saying? Especially with our generation, I feel like we're very like uh, practical, which is nice. You know what I'm hell saying? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Like practical as fuck. So me, I want to make like practical stuff, bro. Like I'll start working on stickers. Uh, you know my girl. Um, shout out Jocelyn, by the way. I'm gonna just throw that out there. Uh, my girl, she does Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? So she does all my Photoshop. She do my designs. You know what I'm saying? We have a whole bunch, bro. I just been working on them. And uh, my homie, this is his hat right here. You know, didactic. Okay. okay. Um, I've been rocking with him for a while. Like I knew him in high school. We played ball together on the same team. And, you know, everybody's trying to make clothes and stuff, but, like, he's, like, nah, like, I don't want to make just, like, clothes, though. Like, I want to make, like, you know, you know, it's kind of, like, one of those things, like a movement, you know? I'm trying to make, like, a little movement. Like, I'm trying to make this cool. I'm trying to normalize this. And so that's why I'm, like, bro, I fuck with your hats. Plus, I don't know where he be getting these, but they're comfortable, you know what I'm saying? So, nigga, like, hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, throw it on, so. So you say, like, that's somewhat an affirmation you've had. Like, yeah. your opinion on that has kind of changed, like, yeah. the clothing and shit. Clothing, like yeah. But I'm trying to get on it, too, so, like, you know, probably no time uh, right now because I kind of want to be synonymous with, like, my music and my production and stuff that I'm doing in my other avenues. So I wanted to kind of just fit. Um, but definitely, like, I feel like it's one of the things that, like, I've kind of been sticking my, my head into because I feel like it's important. You Tangible know? shit, bro, is, is something that is, it was underrated and now is so much yeah. highly rated in what's going on. Like, the vinyls and all that shit is really coming back because people want to have a way that they can buy your shit and be like, yo, I got this from Rattler. Yeah. Like, this is some shit from This Fool's Merch. You know like, what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's like when I was a fan. When you get that that CD, that shit like that, you would be looking at that shit. You would be looking at the, the songs, like, on your days when you bored and shit. Like, yeah. it's like something to do and something to get back into your vibe. Like, I feel like the greatest thing about this, too, and I feel like it's the last thing I kind of want to put into it because it's kind of yeah, the yeah, end-all, yeah. be-all. But it is, and I don't want to sound corny or nothing, it's really just like we got it. what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like what it is that you're going for, you know what I'm saying? Like, because even with the brand that I put out, I don't even look at it as like a brand or anything. I just look at it as clothing, you know what I'm saying? But like the message behind the brand, quote unquote, what you would speak, is its own thing. It has nothing to do with me, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be attached to me because it's already attached to something bigger than me, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, I love that, bro. So like I'm not trying to make Nike, Yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be like, I don't want to throw nobody out and say, like, you know, they doing this, but, like, Yeezy, right? Like, most people that you would say, you know, when they go and spend a lot of money on Yeezy, they're buying it for the name, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, that has its own space. And, you know, I agree. It, I know there's you spaces like within that, yeah. that as well where I'm, like, I'm just perfectly acceptable. But I feel I, like it's getting out of hand I to the point where it's only shit. because of the name. You people know what aren't saying? caring about what it looks like, they what it feels like. what it like. looks like, what it feels like, I you agree. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where it came from, the quality of it. Nah, you know what I'm saying? That's like an afterthought after, did you see them new Yeezys? You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to be attached to mine. You know where it comes from, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know like I'm doing it, but you buying my stuff because you like the stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? You buying the stuff because you like how you get my stuff, bro. You buying my stuff because you like where I'm going with my stuff. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. has nothing to do with we got it because Rattler does it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Or Rattler's on it. Like That's lame, bro. It's corny. Like I feel you. Like, it ain't about, it's like, be it ain't about it's personal gotta... gain. And yeah. I dig that, bro, because that's what Mauricio always bunkers down to me about the brand, that it's, it's outside of ourselves. It's bigger than ourselves. And with the merch within itself, it's like, it got to be shit. He says it got to be shit that I would rock. Yeah. Like, it got to be 
be shit that and I always resonate that like cause that's the shit that goes like when you see it you wanna see some shit where you see it and you're like damn I would throw that on throw like that on. would go off with my shit like exactly. and not because it's me or the brand just cause like as a closed piece like that would rock with the shit I do mm-hmm. like my lifestyle everyday people and this shit like so I, it's hella inspiring to hear other people with that mindset bro yeah. cause you don't you don't come across a lot of heads because of what you're saying that hype train and shit with that mindset that people that want to put in that work to do that because to do that it takes work to build up a brand and look, bro i might do like white t-shirts bro because i don't know about y'all i love white t-shirts man. we got you on one oh, yeah. high key do we got one yeah, yeah I, got, I got one upstairs bro, okay because i was telling them something about that but i wasn't sure if you still had some and I, we got you on the stickers oh good looking. yeah i got you yeah. now nah, but like t-shirts bro like i love white t-shirts bro if i could i make that a fashion statement bro i got one on right now bro like what's wrong with a number of white tea? Like Hanes, bro, they rich not because they're I got a whole song luxury. about that, man. There ain't nothing wrong with a white tea. <laughs> <laughs> Hanes is rich because they're the white tea, bro. You see what I'm saying? One of my favorite shirts like bro. of all time is just my long sleeve white shirt. It's beautiful. It's bean to shit. Like now it's like kinda not even white. It's like almost like yellow because it's been worn Straight too much. Up. But and you know, like if there I was like an end of the world situation, bro, you're not running for your Yeezy, you going for your white tee. The white bro. long tee. You finna That's grab true. six of them bitches, bro. Cause it's finna be the <laughs> outfit for the next six, you know what I'm saying? Months, whatever it is, how many zombies you gotta run away from, whatever. Yeah. It's your white t shirt, bro, not your Yeezy, bro. You gotta I mean if you're talking about like survival shit like that. Hell yeah, I'm into that shit too. Get some, get a, start a sock line, bro. Hell yeah, some thick ones though. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, are your feet cold? Yeah. No, not. Hey, vine, vine not tree bad, socks, thick and comfortable. Hey. <laughs> yeah, hard. Sir. No wait. Before you do that, <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> might, we might take <laughs> this off, bro. But you gotta tell them the other idea you had, bro. Which one? Right before this, this still had the most brilliant idea I ever heard, bro. Cause you know he's on some producer shit, and he was saying like, "Yo, have y'all ever thought about making it?" But back to this though, when we were t- what we were just talking about, because I'm really interested. Because, I mean, it, it goes back to actually what I was just talking about the NFTs, like the because part of mm-hmm. that is you can make uh, music, you can add MP th- like uh, w- uh, music files, waves, MP3s, whatever. As like one of those. As one of these things. It's amazing. And so, what it is, what I'm planning, and I wanted to talk. I mean, we can kind of talk about it now because it goes into this way. Is that I do want to make things that are meant for the fans, and especially like right now, I was really because con- like. You guys can kind of. I just made this page yesterday before I had to go to work. Um, but this is like where the NFT, this is like the NFT marketplace. So I was trying to add like, just start these on the, one of the collections. And I was like, this is the idea of fine sheet concepts. And I was going to put, I was thinking of making an NFT for each of like, because I have a bunch of old files in my, because I have, I've conceptualized a bunch of these different this covers. One for the other cover? Yeah, mm-hmm. for Are You Gonna Ride? This is the one for Miss Daisy. I have a bunch of these that are just like in the tuck that are concepts for these pieces that were made into something, right? And then I was even thinking about doing the actual cover that we did for each of the individual songs. And for those, the ones with the, the actual cover ones, I was thinking after we do the Sunday's drop, so like two weeks from now, because by then I could probably have it set up and have them all ready to go by then. But basically do like a giveaway to because we only have about 80 people that follow us right so these are people that really fucked with us since the beginning so basically give them access to early collection like hey if you're interested just shoot us an email we'll transfer you an nft token like you get to first come first serve you pick the one which picture you like off the album as it gets taken you know can get these things and then these are collectibles that they the can one homie go- that followed us would be down for that the one that you did the graphic for it he collects a lot of art i feel like there's gonna be like maybe a couple folks that do it but the people that know about it and get into it like it's just like a little come up thing that's like this is a collectible thing that we're giving back to Ooh. the fan and that they can go on and sell it they can do whatever they can the fuck come up it's like yeah, giving exactly. them an opportunity to come up on some yes. shit it's like yo Off this being br- a fan. Yeah, yeah it's like bro i've been a day one fan i want to cop some collectible shit so that, that when you guys blow up i got some collectible shit that's exactly where Ooh, i'm trying to take that's it. hard <laughs> so I was thinking about putting like all these with both so I was thinking the stuff that's like the official stuff for like this album like the one we just did TCV1D we do as like a drop after the Sunday's drop maybe we do something associated with Sundays too I'm not sure yet because the thing is I'm still reading into like the legal aspect of it because I want to understand what the whole rights issue is because from my understanding it, they don't really hold any rights in the sense of they can reproduce and reuse mm. it and it wouldn't limit us in the sense of like where they would have a, be able to be like yo you can't you can't go on and do whatever you want with that because I own this NFT. Because I think the NFT as itself is the individual asset that they own. So they don't have any kind of say past that point. But mm-hmm. I just need to make sure because 
you that, don't want you don't want no one to be like get infringed upon later. Yeah, I don't I don't want to I don't want to fuck ourselves like shoot ourselves in the foot by making these things and then later if we're trying to reuse our own assets and then they're like, "Whoa, you're not the owner of this." Be like, but I I don't think that I don't think it works. Out. I've been looking into it. and I don't believe like I think we'll be yeah, in the clear. Something on that you see. Um, looking into that's kind of important. But it's it's really interesting. But is but that is it. I didn't even know that stuff. That's interesting, bro. But you can. But I wanted. I was thinking about it. Like in the kind of works and interesting in the way because. I have a fuck ton. I mean, you know, I mean, you've listened to yeah, bro. I was like, people, people will cop that shit so quick. We got some crazy shit. I mean, the thing, but it also it comes down to a certain point where I need to. But you, you don't gotta give all the sauce. Exactly, away. I need to decide yeah, of like all the sauce. which ones do I want to keep, which ones what I want, and Please. it's even in the same situation with these because I was like going through the list. I was like, which one of these would I want to potentially keep? Because I have a bunch of stuff that I've made as potential album covers for stuff in the future, right? I've showed you a couple. I'm sh I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What is my favorite one? Yeah, like I've, I've thrown out like a whole bunch of different ones, but I have ones that I'm like I could do with this and set up like collectibles, but it, then it, that's like a whole separate conversation of like me and like on the different side of like what I, if on my own. Personal All right, that thing. sounds like a good but era though. And that's an era. <laughs> <laughs> Low key. <laughs> but for, as far as collectibles, bro, like you can put music on this. And what I'm saying is you can put like, say if there's certain things where like, oh, this is hard, like little things where they will own it. And they, it really is like a sense of giving back to the, if you just give it away to them, you don't even have to sell it. Cause you can choose to sell it or to just transfer it. If you, you know give it I mean? to them. It's a perfect, it's a perfect gift. It's the gift that keeps giving. Exactly. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's a gift that you give to the people and they get to do shit with it. And that's the same thing as collectibles. Like in tangible shit That's real And that's a feasible way To do it You know what I'm saying Instead of just being like Yo let's just press A bunch of vinyls right now Yeah <laughs> <laughs> And I mean And the thing is I was thinking about It's not about Just doing one or the other I think really really Versatile For us It's gonna be like A main focus for us Is gonna be doing both Like doing a set of When we start dropping things Say when we drop a Our next set of merch Right mm -hmm. Our like whatever the, a hat the, the hoodie or hat yeah. the hat the f the picture of the hat that we use as like our promotional thing that can be an asset for the first person that buys the the hat from us mm -hmm. and then that in that gives incentive to someone to one buy the hat to get it started and two they're like yo i got this fucking thing that this is kind of hard like this is a collectible item or and you can the thing is you can do it in uh, you can do it in you series know i love that so you can do like a set of 10 so that you're yeah, like first shit. 10 people to copy get one of these or so you can make like i love that because it goes with our shit how we give away the first our first piece of merch for free yeah so it goes with it so it's like damn now our second piece of merch you still get some shit for free but the merch isn't free yeah exactly like there's like there's, it's like it's like a little levels up I, and that's and that's crazy and and it's art so art can be priceless you don't know exactly. what some shit can go up to exactly and because there's already pieces that are already being sold West for Side that. Gun. there's pieces that are being <laughs> sold for that right now and a lot of it is just because it's early stuff because this is such a new market like this is stuff that has only come out within like the past like three years i think two three years i think that's why griselda is fucking groundbreaking bro I mean, because they they don't do nothing but one of ones, one of twelve. Okay, yeah. and they fucking stay doing it's it. Smart, They're like, it's smart making these like r scarcity rarity, you know. And what I mean? it's like, like you said, it's quality. Like they make sure, like I'm gonna put, like I'm gonna sign this shit. I'm gonna fucking like get the homie to paint a fucking mural on this shit. Like Griselda, though, their def, their merch game is it's next level. It's smart. It's they're really, really they combine that shit with the wrestling, the like with like it's nuts. Hey, this is hard. Tell you, bro. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into the music section, bro. Fuck. Yeah. So we can talk about like, some real shit. I know you want to hear some beats and like jam and shit. We'll get into all that. Trust who? I'll be down there and damn before I ever trust you. It's gonna take a real soldier trying to fill my boots. My boots. It's gon' take a Holy Ghost to break the curses from the roof Had me up all night tryna figure out the truth I done cried no tears for my cousin in the booth I done cried no tears tryna get away from you I done had mental breakdowns big enough to break crowns I've been trying hard to break ground Focus on my craft, I deliver them a crazy sound Tell the whole truth as crazy as it may sound I found my face on the floor, drunk for sure Down my final pour, took a tour of the empty glass Reminisce about the past Good times never last And my life been going fast My girl said that I'm miles away Even when we occupy the same space Even when we sitting down face to face Feels like I'm trapped in a sunken place I wanna be in a whole different state 
When nobody knows my features Step from out the bleachers Exotic women, new creatures Thick booties on the teachers Mixing drugs done turn me to a preacher Terrified that I'm acquainted with the reaper I love sluts but deep down I'm a true gentleman I'm perfect for your daughter, I'm a keeper Shit changed when I started smoking reefer A wild west to the brim full of divas Demons and leeches, trade souls in leisure. Kill you and your dog, ain't no phone calls to Peter The heart getting cold, I cannot find a heater Trusting in man is gonna leave you Left for dead SOS, left on red in my head, more fatigue filled with stress I can't breathe, got a pounding in my chest I won't lie, everything in life's a test You gon' need a tutor just to get your flesh in check Pussy perfect. perfect. She gon' come on through when she don't work it. Work it. She look put together on a surface. surface. I know that she lacking a real purpose. purpose. You chose up, not tell me, was it worth it? Worth it. Uh, baby's coming through, they bought they burkin'. Uh, they not watching me, I know she lurking. Uh, birdies on my phone and they be chirping. Uh, I know that nigga did you the worst. I was the one who let you first. No shawty coming through, leave her purse She know she coming right back afterwards Sorry, baby, girl, no, I'm not perfect But I could've been your man, put a ring on it Put that G-string to the side and made off spring on it With that iPhone against the wall, made a scene on it She be acting like that pussy perfect perfect. She gon' come on through when she don't work it She look put together on the surface I know that she lacking a real purpose Chose up, not tell me was it worth it Baddies coming through, they bout they burkin' Late night watching me, I know she lurking Birdies on my phone and they be chirpin' Blasting off with the neighbors up. Uh, 
Rather have a cutie than better be honest. The modest be the ones to be the hottest. Rather have a cutie or better be honest. Yeah. Rather have a shorty who's sweaty with me and still act modest. Rather have a little booty over a fatty. Grip better when I'm deep in it, she calling me daddy. In the gym, my girl, the center of attention. I train her right, so really there's no competition. Work them boots, make sure you get the last. Try to grab me a little waist when I hit from the back. Lacking self control, my way too honest. I told her the truth's a trippin'. It made me not wanna be honest. Quit playing games, what more do you want from me, girl? Just be honest. Now I'm finna ball on these hoes like I'm Giannis. Rather have a cute than better be honest. I'm big headed, the better they are when they dishonest. She gon' choose up cause she got options. I can take seven and make a ten just to be honest. Take a seven and make her a ten, she'll be grateful. Monday women, they always hungry.